Podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter. I'm solo today, but we're going to have a lot of great call ins. Uh, we have Juliana Pena calling in, uh, Arnold Allen, who come, had a huge come from behind. Wow. I mean, I, I did a joke. This guy came from behind more than Lance Bass. I mean, this, this is, that's one of these guys. Ar- Arnold Allen is the truth, uh, as well as Kelvin Gastelum, who beat Jacare. Let's see who he wants next. Uh, first, I want to thank our sponsors, Speedweed. Listen, people, if you live in California and you smoke marijuana, you do edibles, you do CBD, you do vape, go to speedweed.com, follow them at speedweed. They will deliver it right to you. There's no need for to have to get into your car and waste money on gas and go to a dispensary and who knows what, okay? They will bring it to you. You get the pizza delivered, right? You get Chinese food delivered. People get... All kinds of things delivered. I mean, how many times my wife gets these Amazon things? I don't know what's going on. You get in things from China every day. I don't, I don't even. It's, it's, there's no point of not getting your marijuana or your CBD or your vape, whatever you need, delivered to you. And I'm telling you, my dad had like a really bad hip. Uh, his hips were killing him. He put on all kinds of stuff. He was taking painkillers. He used that CBD THC uh, cream. And his hip got so much better, and he was like, wow, this is amazing. So go to speedweed.com, mention the code ROASTED. Okay, you get $10 off, $100 or more. The guy's name is Gino. He's a great guy. He's a big MMA fan. Help, help yourselves, and, uh, and, and, and then uh, go to speedweed.com. Help me. Help everybody. So also, uh, listen, people, sexual performance issues, it's more common than you think. Over 25% of new ED cases are guys under the age of 40. I just turned 40. I'm on the cusp. But I'm telling you, I, it happens all the time. You know, you know, a lot of times people are on other pills or you're not that excited or maybe you just don't feel it. And then, then your thing doesn't work and it's embarrassing. And then the girl takes it personally. Or the guy takes it personally, whatever, whatever you're into. 40% of men by age of 40 struggle from not being able to get and maintain an erection. Or you get it and it's kind of it's kind of soft. That's even worse. Or not that's not worse, but all of a sudden you you know you, a girl thinks she's getting a nice throbbing heart on and it's just loose and it's limp and it's uh it's bad. And even the world's greatest actors can't fake one. So why do guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn to medicine and science? I don't know why people do that. They shouldn't. Go to forhims.com. It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, ED can be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat ED. Trust me, if you have erectile dysfunction, it's not good. It, it's in your head all day long, and not the good head. It's in the bad head. And these uh, four Hims is going to help you out. They got, they got well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you combat ED. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. They got prescription solutions backed by science. There's no waiting room, no awkward doctor visits, no lines. I mean, you got to make an appointment, then you got to cancel all these kinds of stuff. Then you got, it's a fucking disaster out there, guys. And like, uh, they got one ED pill starting with a V, just came off patent on December 11th. It's a game changer. It's so easy. Severe ED isn't just an issue for old, rich guys in bathtubs, okay? It's not just how it used to be or how you thought it would be. It affects guys in their 30s and 40s. And by no means uh, uh, should you have to deal with this, okay? No in-person doctor visits, not anymore. It's erectile without the dysfunction, just to eat. It's hard made easy. Say hello to your little friend. So try 4 hymns for a month today for just $5. We'll get you started for just 5 bucks while supplies last. See the website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. Go to 4 slash MMA Roasted. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash MMA Roast E-D. That's 4 com slash MMA Roast E-D. So... How am I doing? I'm doing good. I've been on tour with Jeremy Piven. Uh, me and Jeremy have been doing, uh, we did Minnesota, and then we did Edmonton, and now we are in Boston. I love Boston. I just came back from Faneuil Hall. Uh, I'm having a great time with Jeremy. The shows have been sold out. All of them have been sold out. Uh, he, he's killing it. I'm killing it. It's, uh, it's great meeting new fans. Sometimes you get people that are like, uh, like I did a show last week. There was a woman in the front who was on the phone the whole time, which is like if you're. I understand if you go to a comedy club and somebody calls you, or you get a babysitter or some kind of. Just get up, leave the room, make your phone call. 
okay? But this girl was talking the entire time, and then arguing with her boyfriend back and forth. Then she was drunk, and she's like, when's Ari coming on? When's Ari? When's Ari? Finally, I was like, you know what? Jeremy heard that you were here and committed suicide. The whole place went ballistic. Then I was like, it's just me for six more hours. And then I'm going to follow you home and tell you jokes. So, yes, that's what I'm doing. It, it, was, it was brutal. It was brutal. But then she ended up getting kicked out, which, which sucks. I mean, you, you go to a comedy club, you're having a, a great time, you spend all this money, and then you get kicked out. It happens all the time. Um, what else? Uh, my wife, she's due uh, in uh, late July, early August. I'm trying to do as much road as possible now, or not as much as possible, but make money so that I can stay at home with the baby and, and be with the baby and my wife, because after August, I don't want to travel so much. Uh, but it, she's actually using this against me a little bit. Like We got into an argument, and she's like, you know, you're, her name is Violet, or her, my daughter's name, or my upcoming daughter. She's like, you know, Violet's upset. You're upsetting Violet, and the baby's mad at you. Like, so now I'm like offending an unborn baby. Like, I'm actually, I've now offended the unborn. People, uh, people, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what's going on there. Uh, but I, I love her. I love my wife. She's, uh, I saw her for a couple hours on Monday before heading out, uh, which was, which is cool. And then, uh, what else? Uh, Facebook. So I'm on Facebook, right? And, you know, I'm scrolling through my friends. I got 5,000 on my one Adam Hunter account. Then I started another Adam Hunter page, and it says 5,000 there. My, my main page doesn't have that many. It's basically just I have friend pages. I don't like doing, like, the fan page thing. I don't know. It's just not – I should do it. I should convert them all over. I just – I don't. And I'm scrolling I'm, – so now I'm looking for people that I don't know to just delete as friends because I'm like, if I don't know you or – I'm sure at one point I knew you, we don't contact. If I don't know you well enough to wish you a happy birthday, I, I'd say that we, I'm not even a real happy birthday, like a happy birthday on Facebook, then I'm deleting you, which is, I don't know, which is kind of, and then people get mad at me, like, why'd you delete me? They, but they notice. So I've been deleting people, and then I ran into my my, my, my mom, my stepmom, who who became, who was my mom, and she was my friend for, you know, obviously on Facebook, but she's, she passed away recently. So I'm like, well, should I unfriend her? It's kind of fucked up. You're unfriending you know, my mom who's, who's dead, but I'm like, well, she's not going to care. She's not here. And then even if she was here, I think, you know, if I said to her, like, well, she was living, Hey, is it cool if you die? If I unfriend you on Facebook, I'm sure she would be okay. That's fine. And she might be kind of weirded out by the question, but you can't ask somebody, Hey, is it cool if you die, if I unfriend you? And that's kind of a weird question, but why have her when there's people waiting to come in? Yeah. I mean, she was a good mom. I mean, not like she's going to like any of the updates. And if she does, that's kind of weird. So it's like if there's like a, if there's a club and someone dies in the club, you take them out of the club and let people that are waiting online to come in, right? You don't just keep them there, just dead on the floor. They would probably smell or things would go bad. So that's, that's what I was thinking about yesterday. But I haven't unfriended her yet. I, I just, out of respect for my other family members, because that would be kind of maybe, maybe hard on my brother or something. But I don't know. So that's a, it's a very, uh, very... Very important topic, uh, and uh, let's talk. About, and then I went wrestling with Mitch Clark. Mitch is like, "Let's go wrestling on Sunday," which, which was fun. But you know, I'm like, "Oh, Canadian, this Canadian guy, he's not gonna beat me." Fucking Mitch took me down a lot of times. Uh, you know, you forget that I'm. Yeah, I was a four time prep school class A champion, but that was when I was 18, so it was 22 years ago. So I've been alive longer than than uh, you know. I I haven't wrestled for 22 years. So it's actually, you know, it's, it's, it's less than half my age is when I was the champion. I held my own. I mean, it was, I took down the other guys in the class, but just Mitch was taking me down, which, you know, the ego was a little stroke, but it was good. It was humbling, um, but it was fun. I, I like Mitch a lot. Mitch is a good dude. So that was cool. And then we'll get to some of the Bellator fights and some of the UFC fights that went on. And we'll talk about Wonder Boy and my man, Vince Bichel, who was fighting this week. Uh, Vince is fighting this week, as well as Jake Ellenberger. We got a lot of team roasted. And Lauren Murphy. Murphy, yeah, we got, we got three, three of my, my of my uh, my squad are, are fighting this week, so I'm very happy about that. So I'm trying to get on, talk to Arnold Allen, so uh, who is on Skype. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we could actually talk to him right now. Uh, see if he picks up. Uh, who had a huge come from behind victory? Jesus, that was a uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, Cause. Uh, he, I didn't think he was winning that fight. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone else thought he was winning that fight either. So I'm going to call him right now, see what's up, see if he picks up. Uh, boom. See if this works. There we go. Arnold Allen. What's up? What's up? How are you, man? Good. Yourself? Good, good, good. Congratulations on the, on the big win. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Uh, that, that was awesome, dude. Holy shit. That was a huge... 
You came from behind more than I do when I do doggy style with my wife who's pregnant now. <laughs> Good work, man. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, now, explain to me that that looked like it was so simple of a submission, but you never really see it like that. Explain to me, what exactly did you do? Um, I just wrapped my arms around his neck and squeezed, really. Yeah, but is that something you do in practice? But, but, but it was very slick, though, the way you did it, because he didn't think he was in trouble and, 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 and like, until you had it locked. Yeah, he just uh, he left his neck there a bit long, and uh, yeah, I, I've caught that before in own fights, so I figured I'd go for it. Did now? Yeah. Did do you think you were down two rounds to nothing? Uh, yeah, I was definitely down. It was a uh, it wasn't looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that must have been awesome, man. I mean, you, you got the big win. Uh, you were the favorite. Um, yeah. Did you did you know you were the favorite? Did you, did he he uh, surprise you with how uh, good he was? Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, I knew he was a favorite, but um, he was. Uh, yeah, he did surprise me. He had some tools that I, like I didn't see in his other fights. You know, like he didn't really shoot double legs in previous fights, and usually he was like a clinch guy, drag you to the floor, and we didn't really prep for anyone with a strong, uh, a strong shot. So he started shooting power doubles, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> now, like, now, like during the fight when he's shooting a power double, and like you're down, is that what you're, is that what's going through your head? Like, why did we not prepare for this? <laughs> yeah, let's figure it out. Fuck. We did clinch stuff the whole camp. <laughs> Fuck, damn. Yeah, that's that's pretty. That's that's that gets pretty cool though. So you got the win. Um, now, now I mean now you're 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 uh, you're thirteen and one. Uh, who do you want to fight? Who do you want to fight next? Ah, f whoever Fraz tells me I'm fighting next. You know? Oh who come on, dude. You, you know I don't know why you guys do that. You guys always uh, say, I'll fight who's ever in front of me. I'm not afraid of anybody. But then everyone just rolls their eyes like, oh god, yada yada. Yeah. But you know what it is? I feel like an idiot. And Faraz has this way of, uh, like, dad talking you. So I'd say something, and then he'd tell me, no, no, we don't want that. We want this. And we want this for this much. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now I feel dumb. Nice. So, yeah. so, you, so you were in uh, Canada the whole camp? Yeah, I was out in TriStar for, like, uh, like the last year. What, now, uh, what, what's happened like for you? Yeah, it's nice, man. It's nice. Nice girls over there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, food's good. Yeah. You know? Good to see. The only thing I dislike is the the French speaking. I like the English speaking, but right, right, right. Yeah. Do the do the women go crazy over your accent? Uh, not really. No. <laughs> I think I've got. I haven't got a nice accent, I guess. Damn. From the uh, not from the posh parts. Yeah. Now, yeah. now you went from being kind of a big fish in a small pond over in England. Uh, yep. I, I would assume you were dominating almost everybody in your camp over there. And now, were you thrown to the wolves over a TriStar? Was, was that a big wake-up call? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was pretty rough. You know, there was guys. Obviously, I know them now. But one of my teammates who was in my corner, uh, Louis Sanadaki. He's he's uh, he's a band weight and like he, he kills me. <laughs> he kills me in the gym. He's not in the UFC yet, but I'm uh, I'm hoping he will be soon. He's definitely good enough. But I was going there. I'm like, oh man, I don't even know this guy. Yeah, what, he's, he's what's his name? Me. He fights way right below me. What, yeah. What's uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Louis Sanadaki. Louis Sanadaki. So we're gonna look out for him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, he's good. He's good. I've seen him sub GSP a few times as well. He's a bantamweight. No way. Yeah. You seen that? You seen a bantamweight sub, sub like GSP tapped? In the gym, I've said it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking crazy. Now, yeah. have you trained with GSP? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he messes me up too. <laughs> I mean, what's that like? Uh, yeah, it's unreal. Like at first, I remember sparring with him at first, and uh, I, I was like pulling my punches. I weren't sure I was allowed to hit him. I'm like, this is the best guy of all time. I'm not allowed to hit him. And then he cracked me. I was like, ah, shit. I'm gonna I have to put it on him. I have to try my best. And I just remember as soon as I stepped forward, his, his double, his timing on his jab, his double leg. It's unreal. Yeah. I mean, how do you think if if, if him versus Khabib, which I think if Khabib doesn't fight Connor. I think maybe they will make the GSP Khabib fight. How do you think that goes? I, I think GSP beats everyone. I just think he's too, you know, not obviously within reason, like with weight and all that, but he's just too smart. I've never seen anyone who thinks like he thinks. You know, he's he's too smart. He's 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 too good. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. Now, is your all your family over in England still? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're all over it. I'm just uh. When I'm back in England, I stay at my mum and dad's house. So my dad was just popping his head out this window, giving me the finger, but he's, he's oh, hidden now. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And how long are you yeah. going to stay here for? 
Uh, just six weeks, then I'm back to Canada. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, was there a yeah. lot, was a lot of pressure? A lot of your friends want tickets. Hey, hook me up with tickets. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people were asking for tickets, but uh, the event sold out quick. So, uh, you know, they only give me four tickets for friends and family. So, but that is what it is. Yeah. Did, did um did afterwards did you party was uh now what do people say to you like were there people say like good job or like I mean because like you know do they say did they, people were saying hey you lost the first two you got lucky or were people saying great job yeah. or great sub oh, shit, it's crashed yeah hello uh yeah it's back yeah yeah people were just saying uh yeah they were just saying congrats on the win and all that no one really gave me too much shit about being two rounds down but. Yeah, it is. It is. Wins a win. I'm happy. However, no, it, it, it was it, it was awesome. It was awesome. I, I was so happy for you. I think a lot of guys sleep on you. I mean, I've I've been a fan of yours since the uh, I think it was the Titan days or something. Or I don't know where you right. You were you were in something or Cage Warriors or something. Yeah, Cage Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then you when you when, when you fought Maquan, uh, was yeah. there was there a lot of bad blood between you and Maquan? No, nah, not at all. He's uh, he's always been nice to me. You know. Yeah. And, uh, I've seen him like I see. Obviously, he's always getting in his face, talking shit. But he's always been cool. I see him in the hotel. We chat. I said hi. Yeah. I'm, I'm always friendly. <laughs> yeah, no, you're a very nice guy. Now, after your fight, did you watch the Wonder Boy Till fight? Yeah, I did. I did. I was. I wasn't really paying attention. I was in the groom room stuffing on cakes and stuff, so <laughs> I wasn't really focused on it. I've heard like it was controversial, but I'll be honest, I wasn't watching well enough to know. Uh, I was kind of worried. It's, it was a hard fight to score. You know, it was like... still coming forward the whole fight. That's that's what I see. He looked good. He looked good. Yeah, and it, Wonderboy is one of those guys where it's like impossible to look good against him unless you knock him out. You know, which who yeah. do, which who does that? It's just one of those things where... Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. What are your thoughts, because uh, uh, I'm going to jump around, on the Bellator card over the weekend? I watched the Bellator card, which is also... Uh, um, I, see, uh, I see some of it. I see uh, Wonder... Uh, no, no. What's his name? MVP? Phil oh, Phil Davis, yeah. Uh, I see the head kick against Linda Vassell. That was impressive. Yeah. He's uh, he's improved a lot. Like, he keeps improving. He's like a wrestler, you know, with a little striking in now. He's knocking people out of head kicks. Yeah, but then actually, Linton took him down twice, though. I, I even oh, said, yeah. I go, Phil, how the fuck? I go, quit taking take him down by, uh, from British guys, right? Yeah. Is he from England, Linton? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Um, I know. I see that joke about. Um, Brad Scott, he went over four <laughs> takedowns and got in the GV wrestling team. I was dying. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't you guys have like one guy on the Olympic team? I think you have like. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Now, I, I did see the uh, the MVP fight, and you know, I guess he's gonna fight again in 2020. That guy never fights, but his he looked amazing against yeah. against a tough guy against against a tough guy, the caveman David Rickles. What are your yeah. thoughts on MVP? Uh, I don't know. Like he's. Yeah, he's impressive. He's very impressive. But yeah, again, I want to see him fight a tough guy. He's got all this hype. I want to see him fight a top fifteen guy in the world. Someone like yeah, oh, I'd like to see him fight someone like Rory. I'd like to see how he does with that. How do you think it is against Rory? Uh, I think Rory crushes him. Yeah, yeah. Does Rory yeah. train with you guys too? Still? Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, I remember the first time I went there. Like you say, getting thrown in the deep end. I sparred around with Rory, and uh, it wasn't long after he came back after his uh, his nose was damaged from the Lula fight. Yeah, I think I hit him in the nose, and then I just see his face change, <laughs> and he just started putting his shots in a little bit hard. I was like, "Oh shit!" I think yeah. he's gonna knock me out. He's gonna knock me out. And I remember Fraz was there, and Fraz said something, and he just he went back to being nice. So I was like, oh, "Thank fuck for that." <laughs> well, it's funny because I I remember when Rory fought uh, Woodley and just made mm. Woodley look terrible, and. Yeah. It, yeah. And I was talking to Ellenberger about that, who Rory made him look terrible too. And he said, he goes, that guy, he's yeah. just so strange. He's got such a hard way to fight because of his rhythm is so unique. And he makes good guys yeah. look really bad. Yeah. Yeah. He's exactly, exactly, that's exactly what he does. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, cool. Now, now, you talked about the women in Montreal, uh, which is where you're right. And are you in Toronto or Montreal? Montreal, Montreal. Now, um, do you have a girlfriend? Are you having threesomes? Is it just is it Tinder out there? What's going on? Threesome. Um, I basically have a girlfriend. Yeah, I like pretty much. She's yeah, yeah, I do. You, <laughs> what do you mean? You basic? Does it, does your girl know that you? She's basically your girlfriend. That's horrible, yeah. dude. Well, I don't know. 
Have, 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 you, have, you, have you guys talked about it? Have you said you're my girlfriend? No, no, we haven't. No, I'm awkward like that. You know what I mean? And how long's it been? Uh, a few months, like three months. Three I mean, months. Do you, now do you like her like exclusively? Do you, do you want to be with her? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's tell her, man. What, for, what are you doing? What do you mean? Listen, here's what you do, all right? Because you're gonna, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be in this weird spot where <laughs> you have a girl that you like, but then you're a fighter. You're gonna be out hanging out with the the fighters, and then these hot chicks with fucking tight, pe- you know, whatever, and not wearing underwear, yeah. and the big tits are gonna come out with glitter, and they're gonna be like, oh, they're gonna see your ears and get all turned on, right? Yeah. And then you're gonna end up wanting, to, but if you don't have any kind of commitment to her, you're gonna end up banging a lot of those girls, and then you're gonna feel guilty, and it's just. It's so, but, but you're going to have a good time though. So that, that, that's, that's the rub. But if you have a commitment and you say to her, hey, you want to go steady, you want to be my girlfriend, you want to be exclusive, then you're not going to fuck around. But maybe you're not ready for that. Well, true. No, you're right. I think, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, right. and then what would you, I mean, would you be cool if she goes to a bachelorette party and some thunder from down under guy comes and rubs his dick in her face and he's like, hey, what are you doing later? Uh, how would you feel? Nah, I probably wouldn't be a thunder dick though. No. What? I wouldn't be cool with that. Yeah. I wouldn't be cool if Thunder Dick's coming around. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be cool with that, right? No. So you gotta have a no. talk with her. You gotta say, listen, let's go steady. Let's 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 yeah. be exclusive. You know? Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. I've yeah. learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. This is this is the kind Thank you. Yeah, no, no, trust me, if if, if she's worth it. Cause you know, no, no, she's nice. She's nice. She's a sweetheart. There you go. Is she, is, uh, is uh, she fit? Is she a good good looking girl? Yeah, man. Yeah, she's nice. Okay. Plus, she likes you now, and you're a freaking broke fighter that no one knows about. Wait till you become the champion. When you become the champ, yeah. you you know. So, and and you do you you have all the tools, man. You have all the tools to become a champion. You know that, right? Man, I've been told, but I don't know. I need what? to prove it. Someone yeah. said something before. Thanks, man. It's the I truth. So. Now, I mean, how old are you? 24. You're young, man. 24. You've already had 14 fights. You got a 13 and one win. Five knockouts, four submissions. Uh, your only loss was a unanimous decision in 2014. So that's been almost four years. You haven't lost yeah. in four years. Uh, yeah. You know, you're right there. Very remarkable guy. And, and you got the best training camp. Yeah, man. Good guys there. Good guys. Uh, so this weekend, who do you think is going to win? Marlon Moros? Or uh, uh, who's he fighting? Moros versus uh, uh, oh, Jim, Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, Superfly Snugger, Jimmy. What's his name? I think Jimmy Rivera. Jimmy Rivera, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, he's good. He's uh, he's got a work rate on him as well. He's just good pressure. Get a forward guy. Yeah, he's, I think he'll win. I think he'll win. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, the guy, the guy gets no. He has no. He has no, uh, no respect. That guy. Uh, no, no. Also, also on the card is uh, uh, Vince Pichel versus Gregor Gillespie. Yeah, I don't. Know. I'll be honest. I, I don't know. Those guys so much. Yeah, Vince I don't watch every card to be honest. Oh uh, yeah, I got you. Okay. Uh, finally, we'll go. We'll go with this one. Uh, Daniel Tamor from uh, against Julio Arce. What was that again? Uh, uh, David Tamor versus Arce. You know him? I know Arce. Yeah, I've seen him. I think. I honestly, I don't watch that much. All right, you don't know any of these guys. Okay, no problem. I don't know who's on there though. All uh, right, Nathaniel Wood. Uh, he's on there. He'll be a a good fighter to watch out. I think he's fighting Johnny Eduardo, bantamweight. He's a uh, Cage Warriors champion, ex Cage Warriors champion now. He's uh, making his debut. That'll be one to look out for. All right, cool. Nathaniel yeah, Wood. Nathaniel he's Wood. Good, man. All right, I like it. I like it. All right, so Stipe versus Daniel Cormier. Who wins that fight? Stipe. Stipe. I think he's he's uh yeah he's too big, too good. I think yeah, I think so. I think so yeah. too. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just a good big guy versus a good smaller guy. It's just one of those yeah. things. It's like DC's beat bigger guys before, but I don't think he's beat bigger guys that are as good as Stipe. No, d- absolutely not. Uh, the rematch versus Cody Nola versus uh, TJ Dillashaw. Who wins the rematch? Uh, I think TJ. If he throws the head kicks, if he throws head kicks, he's, he's winning. If he tries the box, he's gonna get knocked out. Oh. Yeah. that's that's interesting. It's funny because I thought he was kind of throwing head kicks because. Just to like keep him away from him, you know. Yeah. But then he actually yeah. like was like it actually landed. I, I freaking I couldn't believe it. Yeah, man. 
So here he's, we are. Uh, By the way, we got Arnold Allen right he's now. He's a good boxer. He's, he's a good boxer. On the podcast, Arnold Allen coming a huge come from behind victory. Uh, it was amazing. One of the best things I've ever seen. I was so proud of you, man. I was jumping up Thanks. for joy. It was. I, I was. You know, you're you're a good guy. You need you need a, a better. What's your what's your what's your nickname? Uh, it's it's all mighty, but it's like. <laughs> Fuck it. It was basically, there was a company uh, called Almighty Clothing that was sponsoring me. And they were like, oh, you should call yourself Almighty and we'll give you this. And I was like, okay. And it just kind of became a thing and I never changed it. So, yeah. Are they still sponsoring you? No, I think the company's down. All right. So we got to get a better, like, we got to get a better nickname. I know. Uh, I like, like, what about like Arnold? Like, I don't, I don't know if you're well hung, but like well hung or something or, or like. Uh, average. Or average. Arnold Average. What about like Foreskin? Don't you guys have Foreskins over there? <laughs> oh, Foreskin. Yeah, yeah. Foreskin Allen. Yeah, Arnold <laughs> Foreskin Allen. I, I, I think that would be good, right? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Foreskin Allen, I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah, and then your move could be like the pullover. You just like pull it over <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The hood. I'm in, I'm in. Well, listen. All right. Tell your girlfriend you want to be exclusive with her. Okay, all right. Have a, chat with her, yeah. have a chat with her. I can't wait for your next fight. And, and thanks for all you do, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Take care, Arnold. All right. That, was, thank, all right, that was the foreskin. The foreskin Arnold Allen on the podcast. Super nice guy. Fucking class act. Like that guy a lot. Uh, he's still there right now. I can still see him. All right. Now he's gone. All right. So that was the, the foreskin Arnold Allen. Uh, I like that guy. You know, these British guys are, are awesome. Just fucking they're good people. And fighters, you know. Uh, by the way, shout out to Michael Bisbing, who retired. Definitely should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, he was a champion. He was a tough winner. He was uh, he's a good guy. He, he's fought everybody. Didn't duck anybody. And, uh, yeah, he's he's got my vote for Hall of Fame. So, uh, yeah, so shout out to him. Uh, let's talk about that Bellator card a little bit some more. So, Musasi... Uh, man, he's got to be the best fighter not in the UFC anymore. I mean, that was a mistake letting him go because he, on any given night, could beat anybody. I mean, anybody. He could also get caught like he did against you know, Uriah Hall and stuff. But he, he has a win over Weidman, and you saw how much better he was uh, in Bellator than the guy he fought. And uh, So, yeah, so Musasi um, and uh, that, that fight with Wonderboy that I think oh, it was a hard fight to score. I mean, you look at the damage. You know, Till did drop him in the last round. You know, his, his, he made Wonder Boy's black, uh, his leg so black and identified as Rachel Dalzal. Uh, so I would say Till won, but it was, it was a weird fight. Wonder Boy is, a, is a, one of those guys that is really, really hard, hard to fight and hard to look good against. And like I said, even with like the Woodley fights, everyone was blaming Woodley for those fights, but it wasn't necessarily Woodley's fault. The first fight was great, by the way, but the second one, it's just that's the way he is. He doesn't engage, and and he's a counter puncher, and he's got that strange fucking karate stance, which works for him. And you're not gonna get it, 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 like the two most exciting Wonder Boy fights he's ever been was the first uh, uh, Woodley fight, and also the Matt Brown fight, which he lost. But other than that, I mean. It's just even when his victory over Rory was kind of kind of strange. Another guy, by the way, who Musasi and Rory are two guys that you could argue you could argue are the two best guys in the world to their weight in their weight class or, or up there. And Phil Davis, I am very excited for him. Uh, that was a big win for him. Um, and uh, a guy that people overlook all the time. Everyone overlooks Phil Davis. I don't know why. So, um, like I said, my man Vince Pichel is fighting this week. Super excited for him. Love that guy. Let's uh, let's try to call him. And wish him good luck. He doesn't know I'm calling, uh, which always goes well when I when I when I do this. But let's let's call Vince. See how he's doing. Uh, hopefully, uh, he's he's ready. Uh, he's he's got a big big fight coming up against Gregor Gillespie, who is a um, an awesome wrestler. I don't really know much about him as a person. I never met him. People say good things about him, so you know uh, I'm not gonna say he's he's not one of those situations like Mike Perry where you're like, oh, this guy, you know. And by the way, Mike Perry is now tweeting out the N word, him saying the N word. I don't know, dude. You don't have to do this for attention. You're a good fighter, a great fighter. You get exciting fights. People like you. You don't have to put videos of you saying the N word to to get attention. It's just you don't need it. People people seem to mistake attention for success. And a lot of people get a lot of attention, and it doesn't do them well. Uh, Mayhem Miller being a guy that uh, uh, I, th I think would be a good example of that. He's gotten a lot of attention in the last couple of years, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Just because people are talking about you doesn't mean that you're doing well. 
uh, especially if they're not saying the right things about you. So anyways, let's call Vince right now. See if he picks up the phone. Hello, is this Vince Bichel? Hello. Hello, Vince. Vince. Listen, can you hold on for one second? I'm on a film set right now. We're directing a film. So back here is... This is our best friend on set. We for all the environmental noises that bring in the air conditioning so we can shoot in the Texas heat. We're just, we're just giving one of the producers a tour. Give me one second. Okay. So, director? Tour director? Hey, Brella. You can see from your mind all back there. How's it going? Listen, what's what's this call about? Is this Vince Pichel? Okay. Uh, I just want to wish you good luck on your fight this week. Okay. Uh, you're on the MMA Roasted Podcast. We're talking to Vince Pichel. I just want Hold to say... Hold on a second. <laughs> Shelly, we need the rain. We need the rain exactly at 2.30. The rain has to be at 2.30. So just make sure that the water trucks are here before then to get that delivered so we can get the rain on. Thank you. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Could you start over? Hey, this is Adam Hunter on the MMA Roasted Podcast. Just wanted to wish mm -hmm. you good luck in your fight this week against Vince, Pich against Gregor Gillespie. How do you feel about your fight? How do you feel? Are you, are you ready for the fight? Uh, I got you. Okay, I'm interested. Okay. I'm interested, but just get a little bit more into detail so I understand what it is that you need from me. Okay, so you're fighting this week in Utica at UFC. I want to know how you're approaching this fight. <laughs> how long you been? Hello? I got you. Listen, they need me back on set, so I'm going to have to cut this off, all but right? But how are you going to deal with his wrestling? Hello? Hello? Yeah, how are you going to deal with Gregor's uh, wrestling? Hello? Yeah, how do you plan on dealing with Gregor's wrestling this week? Listen, can you hold on for one second? I'm on a film set right now. We're directing a film. Okay, okay, so are you going to... Uh, now, he's got excellent wrestling. He was a national champion. You have better striking. How do you plan on dealing with this guy's wrestling? We're just, we're just giving one of the producers a tour. Give me one second. No problem. Uh, you give that tour, so that's what you plan on doing? Uh, I, I take it this guy is not Vince Pichel, but I don't know why he's on the phone still with us, or me, but let's see how he's going to deal with Gregory Gillespie's wrestling. So, hello. Listen, what's, what's this call about? Uh, you're fighting this week, correct? In the UFC? Utica? Okay. Okay, I want to know. You have a big uh, fight. The okay. guy is undefeated. He's 11 or no. What are you going to do to deal Hold with his wrestling? Shelly, we need the rain. We need the rain exactly at 2.30. The rain has to be at 2.30. So just make sure that the water trucks are here before then to get that delivered so we can get the rain on. Thank you. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Could you start over? Yes, okay. So this is Adam Hunter from MMA Roasted. Mm -hmm. you're, you're fighting Gregor Gillespie this week. Uh, you're the co-headlining the event. What are your plans on dealing with Gillespie? Uh, I got you. Yeah. Okay, I'm interested. I'm okay. interested, but just get a little bit more into detail so I understand what it is that you need from me. I'm, I just want to know how you're going to deal with his, his, his uh, wrestling. <laughs> Have you been working on your takedown defense? I got you. Listen, they need me back on set, so I'm going to have to cut this off, all right? All right, thank you. Good luck. Hello. Hello, is this Vince Pichel? Hello. Yes. Listen, can you hold on for one second? I'm on a film set right now. We're directing a film. All right, so I take it that was not Vince Pichel. That was a guy on a film set. I don't know how he's going to deal with Gregor's wrestling, but uh, hopefully he does good. Um, sorry, this is my last time I'm going to attempt to call Vince Pichel and see how he's doing. Why would that guy stay on the line so much? But uh, that, was a, that, was, that was a very strange call. Uh, it was definitely not Vince, though. Vince is definitely not good at directing. Uh, but, you know, who knows? All right, so let's see if this actually works. All right, so we are calling Vince Pichel to wish... Hey, Vince, what's up, man? What hey, do you have something funny with your phone? Like some kind of weird like pickup service or something? Or it's like something. Oh yeah, it's a robo killer. What is that? It's an app that basically uh, will fuck with people like bots that call you and stuff. Tell marketing and tell marketers it'll fucking it'll fuck with them. It'll be like a bot talking to you. Oh, I think that's what happened earlier because I called and they were like, "We're filming a movie set. I can't hear you." And then I kept repeating it on the phone, and I was like, "I, I don't know if that was a real person or not." It was very strange. 
you're such oh, a yes. you're <laughs> you're such that a, was a bot. you're such a dick, dude. You are such a dick. So well, I, your number's coming up blocked. Oh, well, well, who the hell has that? What, what are you eleven? Who the fuck has a bot that does that? Who who has the time to even think about that? Like what? So uh, I do. That's a good point. Anyway, how how are you, man? So uh, you're you're in uh, upstate New York. Yep, upstate New York. This place is a shithole. <laughs> is it really? Why? Dude, it's so ghetto. Like this place is like it looks like an abandoned city that no one wants to be at. <sighs> okay, now uh, so I take it you're not making a lot of fans there, or are you? I'm making a couple. Oh, except nice. for the guys on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you training? Uh, I'm just training at the hotel. Re- like you're not actually like is anybody holding pads for you or warming up or punching a bag or anything? Oh or? yeah, I got all, yeah I got all my coaches here. Oh nice. So they're just like with they're you. Here. They're so they're with you. You're training how many times a day? Are you training? Um, just once right now. I'm just cutting weight now. Okay, and uh, how's the weight cut going? Uh, good. I'm at uh, I woke up at 167, so I'm gonna train in a little bit here and then. Uh, Drop a little bit of weight. I'm sure I'll get down like 63, 62, 63. And then I'm going to wake up at like 3 or 4 in the morning and cut the rest of the weight. That day? Yeah, because the weigh-ins are at 9 a.m. So I want to be like, I want to be able to weigh in right at 9 o'clock. So you're going to cut 7 pounds day of? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut most of it tonight. I'm going to see what I have. Like, because I'm going to train and I'm going to, uh, I'm probably going to get myself close to 160 actually tonight after training. And then, uh, cause I'm not going to, I'm obviously not going to be drinking water anymore. Got and it. then, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go back to the Airbnb, take a nap. I'm going to wake up at like three or four in the morning, depending on what, it depends on what my weight is after training. But uh, depending on that, I'll wake up and then uh, I'll cut the rest of the weight. Nice. Now, have, have you, have you seen Gregor Gillespie yet? Or have you seen any of his camp or anybody, has anybody talk a little shit to you or anything or? No, no, I haven't seen any of them. Um, one of my uh, one of my coaches uh, saw him, Herman. Herman saw him in the hotel when I was doing like interviews and stuff. But I haven't seen him or nothing. Got it, got it. Now you, uh, now, dude, you're at, you're the, you're the co-main event. How the hell did that happen? That's awesome. I don't know. I just I found out when the poster came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know what's funny too is they have like they have like little cardboard cutouts and stuff here, and I was like, hey. Uh, let me get those. And they're like, well, normally we just throw them away. I'm like, yeah, so let me have them. What the fuck? And they go, like, what do you want them? I'm like, my face is on it, stupid. Why not? That's so, all. Yeah. I'm going to walk away with some cardboard cutouts. <laughs> Dude, I'm so happy for you, man. I'm so excited for you. Uh, I'm, I'm nervous. I am nervous, man. Are you nervous at all? Nah, not at all. That's fucking good for you, I man. I mean, if I, I'm, I'm planning on winning, but if I lose, whatever, I lose. You'd be, he's going to have a hell of a fucking time beating me. I won't tell you that much if he does win. No, no, that's not a good attitude. Well, if I win, I win. If I lose, no, no. Listen, you're not losing, fucker. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not losing. But you know what I mean. The only way he could, the only way he could fucking beat me is like outpointing me, which I doubt he's gonna do. There's right. no way. Right. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, you're already. I mean, well, he's planning on taking you down and submitting you. Correct. That's probably his plan. Yeah, probably, most likely. But I doubt he's even gonna get me down. Honestly, like my defense has been so good, I'm so on top of my shit right now. Like I don't, I don't see him even honestly taking me down. And once he like gets worn out from my strength, um, he's, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, dude, he's gonna. I, honestly, I, I think that I'm predicting a first round knockout, of Vince Michelle. Uh, oh yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm going for, dude. I'm gonna be so explosive in that first round. I'm actually gonna come after him. I'm gonna go after him hard at first and and kind of set the pace and get him a little nervous. Good some power at him and let him know what it's like to really get hit by someone who's got power. Now the way in the the uh, stare down. Are we, are we doing anything crazy? Are we just gonna keep it respectful? No, no, same shit. You I mean I don't hate him? You know what I mean? I don't have any ill feelings towards him. I'm just gonna go out there and give him his first loss and make his fans hate me. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna give M. A. Rosen another shout out or no? You don't have to, but it would be nice. Um, so. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm actually probably going to talk shit to EA Sports, the game, and tell them to put me in the fucking video game. That's hilarious. That is amazing. That's what I want to do. Because I know they're going to try to instigate a fight with me and be like, who do you want next? Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck who I fight next, but what I do care about is why won't EA Sports put me in the video game? <laughs> you should, should do that. Call it EA Sports. And then as far as uh, marijuana, you have it ready for the, uh, after, the, after the fight? You got a good sack of weed ready? I don't. And I don't, and I need some. Do you have any friends out here? Uh, I, could do, I could make some calls. So, uh, yeah, see if you can, see if you can hook me up, dude. <laughs> no, no, no problem. I'm sure our listeners will take care of that. 
Uh, I love it. And I know, I'll just send him a tweet. Who in New York get, who in New York said weed for me? <laughs> you should do that. That would be At the UFC. That would be so funny. Uh, so I'm excited, man. You sound like you're healthy. You sound like you're in good spirits. Uh, oh, yeah, like- I'm totally in a good mood. I'm, I'm super healthy. I'm feeling good. My weight's good. Um, I'm super confident. I'm just, you know what I mean? Everything's going really good right now. It's going to be like New Zealand all over again. And it, but, but it's crazy you're not even at a gym the week of. Like, you're not doing any kind of grappling or any kind of striking, nothing, huh? Oh, I am. I'm, I'm like hitting mitts with my coaches. And then, uh, I'm, so I'm hitting pads with PD, and then Herman's coming in with like some pad work and some grappling. And then I'm doing grappling with Brian. So we're just doing like full rolling stuff, just going over situational stuff, just things like that. You know what I mean? Just it's last minute stuff. I don't really need to like work hard anymore. We're just fine tuning stuff. Uh, no, dude, I'm, I'm I'm excited for you, man. I uh, I'm pumped. I I I, I honest, yeah, I'm, but 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 fucking but but change your that thing. I kept thinking I, I was getting the wrong number. I called that like 19 times that fucking thing, by the way, and got the wrong number. And I kept <laughs> and they're the most obnoxious I people. Know. They're like, we're filming a movie right now. I can't hear you. And then I'm like screaming into the fucking thing. And I was like, what is this? It's, wait, next time it's, it's always a random one. So one time it's like some angry Russian dude. Another time it's like some guy fishing that falls off his boat. There's one that's like some little like, some like Southern accent girl. Yeah, dude, it was, dude I, was, I was yelling at this. You're such an idiot. I'm like, then I'm like, you know what? I bet he's doing this on purpose. It sounds like something that he would have. <laughs> So <laughs> I didn't know it was you though, because the number is being blocked. Yeah, so funny, man. Are so you funny. Even a block? Are you calling from somewhere else? Uh, yeah, no, it's calling you from like my Skype. Oh, from your Skype. Yeah. So any 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 hot chicks in uh, upstate New York? Oh my God, no. Nothing. Are, are you are you on Tinder, Bumble, anything? Soul Swipe? No, no, I'm not. But my coach is. He's like all over that shit. But all he <laughs> finds is a bunch of fucking. I mean, giving them a three would be gracious. Yeah, you got to go on Farmers Only out there. That's probably where all the hot ones are. By the way, Farmers Only? Yeah, by the way, thanks for coming to my birthday party. Oh, yeah, thanks for inviting me, man. That uh, was a blast. Oh, no, thank you, dude. And, and then seeing you, I never, I don't think I've ever seen you as happy as when you met Mr. Belding in real life. Oh, my God, that was so cool, dude. Like, <laughs> I was like a little fanboy in the first night because I used to love that show, dude. <laughs> Dude. I love that show. You're like, wait a minute, I know you. It's it's Mr. Belding. And I was like, you became like a <laughs> fucking six year old. I'm like, holy shit, this is funny. This is awesome. Know, it was so cool. This is it was awesome. So cool to see him. I did the same thing when I saw Zach Morris. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> Mr. Morris. Dude, that's like your weakness, man. Dude, that's what I, that's your weakness. Well, listen, Vince. I, know, I, had, total, I had total nostalgia because that was like a show that I always watched growing up. That and Married with Children. Oh, uh, it was so funny. It was so funny. Well, good luck, man. Uh, good luck. Kick ass. We will all be rooting for you, man. Thank you. Where are you at right now? Are you in Maine? No, I'm in Boston with uh, Jeremy Piven doing comedy. for. I'm doing comedy at Piven, uh, you know, from Entourage, Ari Gold, and then I go to Maine uh, tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw your post actually with him. Yeah, he's a good dude. Oh my god, did you see? Did you see my post about kid talking shit to me? No, what was that? Oh my god, some fucking little seventeen-year-old from Bangor, Maine, was talking shit to me. Uh, so I was like, I was talking shit back, but I'm just like fucking around, you know what I mean? Like yeah. talking shit back to him, like, did he tell me I'm a pussy and he'll beat me up and shit? So I'm like, come down to New York, guys. <laughs> So I'm like calling around. He's like, no, go to Bangor, Maine. You don't want none of this. I'm oh, like, my. Maine. Who the fuck cares about that place? Dude, nobody's in Bangor, Maine. Nobody. Nobody's in Bangor, Maine. Know, but yeah. Like, look, at, look at my Instagram and like see the conversation of me and him going. And then uh, I'll send you the last pic that I sent him. I sent him uh, the thing that said FBI rates, bang, rates Maine's uh, crime rate lowest in the nation or something <laughs> like that. It's like him and so Tim Sylvia. It's, it's, it's probably Tim Sylvia's kid. Fucking hanging out. <laughs> he looks like he looks like a goober ass white trash pedophile rapist. <laughs> rapist. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, it seems like you're. Uh, you know, we we had a really good talk before this. Listen, Vince. Uh, you are the man. You're the man. Uh, get get that W, Thank brother. You, Shock the world. I love you, buddy. I will. I love you too, man. Take I'll care. When I get back. Thanks, man. Hello. Hey, Juliana Pena. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Nothing, nothing I like hearing more than I forgot I'd do this call today. That's amazing. Thank you for, uh, I called you and I, <laughs> I actually heard you say that. That's, that's music to my ears. <laughs> Sorry. So, so how's the hot MILF doing? <laughs> uh, she's good. That's nice that I'm, that you called me hot. <laughs> uh, did you ever think that you'd be a MILF? Did, did that ever, did that ever cross your mind? 
It never crossed my mind, actually. That's why I was saying it's nice of you to say that because I don't think of myself like that. I'm like all frumpy and stuff. But no, no, you're, um. you're always gonna you're always gonna be hot to, to me and to every everybody else who's who's a, uh, a straight a straight Thank person. You. No, I I well, I always knew I wanted to be a mom, but I didn't, uh, you know know that I was going to be like a hot mom or anything like that. That oh. never really crossed my mind, but thank you. Oh, no problem. No problem. Now, now talk to me. So when you found out you were pregnant, okay, so you were dating this guy. I met him. He's a nice guy. He's a cop, which I, th- I think is good because if anybody can deal with you, it's got to be a cop. Um, so you're dating <laughs> a guy who's a cop, nice guy. You know, he doesn't pull out. Boom. You get pregnant, right? <laughs> now, how, how many people were telling you like, Bad idea, don't keep the baby, fight, like, talk to me. No, no one, actually. You know, I, I kind of was shocked when I, I was uh, going over to Singapore as a guest fighter, and I told Sean Shelby, and he was, like, ecstatic. He was like, Juliana, fighting's always going to be here for you. You know, there's so many women out there that can't conceive, they can't get pregnant, they spend thousands of dollars on infertile feminization, like, trying to get pregnant and then even then it doesn't work he's like fighting will always be here for you you know this is such a blessing he's like you just gotta understand one thing i said what he's like when the baby gives when they give the baby to you they say okay here's your baby but then after like two days they leave you and no one like comes home with you the doctors aren't there they don't tell you how to take care of it they just kind of give you this human being and you got to know, are you going to be able to take care of that human being for the next 18 years or not? And I said, yeah, I'll be able to. And he said, okay, well then you're good. Have the baby and, and you can come back to fighting when you're done. And I was like, wow. Okay. Thank you. Wow. And, uh, I was like, well, I'm scared to tell Dana. He's like, oh my God. And he's like, Dana fucking loves kids. And I was like, really? You don't think he's going to care? He's like, no, he's going to be happy for you. He's like, here, I'll text him right now. So he texted Dana and no, I texted Dana in front of Sean and Dana was like, oh my God, babe, congratulations. I'm so happy for you and everything like that. So he was very happy and they were, you know, giving me a very warm, uh, welcoming feeling. And, and that was something that I wasn't expecting at all. Now, Juliana, uh, now my wife, when she was, uh, now when she was pregnant, the first three months, she was angry, like, Err. and in the next three months, she felt better than ever. She was just absolutely glowing. And now the last three months, she's back to being a little psycho. Is, is that how you were? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. The first three months for me were killer. Um, and then you get a burst of energy again in the middle. And then after that, you're like back to like beast mode. Um, the first three months, actually, like no one knew I was pregnant until like six months. And like his family didn't know. And so we went to Mexico for 10 days and I was like so sick so sick and like the streets were bad everyone's smoking it smells like gasoline like you're choking on gas and it's just like food smells cigarette smells gas smells potholes everywhere not to mention like 110 degree heat like I was so sick and everywhere that I landed I would just pass out and they'd be like is she okay like what's wrong with her like dude your chick all she does is just sleep everywhere we go so it was like a mess in the beginning and I was just like irritable hot just tired all the time. And then in the middle, you get like a gigantic burst of energy. You want to work out all the time. You want to do everything. And, and then, and then the end is like back to back to beast mode. You're like tired all the time. Everything hurts. You're waddling like a duck. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare towards the end. And it, it gets like, you're ready. You know, your body has been taken over for like nine months. You're just ready to like have your body back. And, get back to your old self and feeling like your old self again. Cause you just feel like, you know, there's this, you're growing this little alien inside of you. But oh my after God. that, it's all, uh, now, it's home free after now, that. Did you have a, a C-section or did it come out of the thing? <clears throat> no. Yeah. I had a C-section. I didn't realize that I was, um, I went 40 weeks and six days and, um, I had absolutely no idea. First off, I had a, a male doctor. I wouldn't suggest, that for females um i should have changed my doctor a long time ago but yeah and i didn't change my doctor and he would always say oh yeah you feel that that's her head down there and it totally wasn't her head was up by my heart and she was completely smashed like a taco so when she came out by c-section um 
like if you press down on her legs, her legs would shoot straight back to her forehead. And uh, they stayed like that for about a day until they kind of got back to normal. But oh my yeah, God. I was completely shocked that I was breached. I had no idea it was an emergency C-section and I didn't realize until literally the day she was born. So you went to Mexico when you were pregnant and then gave born. birth to a taco. That's uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, she was she was smashed in half. It was literally it was crazy. I felt so bad. Oh God. Well, at least now she's gonna be flexible. And, and everyone, my like my mom would say, "Yeah, you're not even close to giving birth, Juliana. Like your belly hasn't dropped at all. She's sitting so high." And my mom's had four kids, but instead of listening to her, I was like, "Well, maybe that's what happens with your body, but my body is different, and this is where she's sitting, you know." But most women, their their bellies will drop, you know, and their head will get into position, and she was just sitting like super high up, like. I, I still had a shelf that I could like put stuff on. So um, for my next baby, I'll know better. But for this one, I was like, you know, I'm in Chicago. I don't have my family around me to, you know, tell me what's up all the way. So I kind of was just like, oh, this is just the way my body is. And then I found out um, oh, it was crazy. My, now, now, sex- but, you know, whether it's whether it's regular birth or, or C-section, the most important thing is that she's here, she's healthy. And, and that's the most important thing. I did feel like I was being robbed a little bit of, you know, hunkering down and, and pushing her out like most women get the opportunity to do but maybe on my next baby oh come on all of the matters is the baby came out you know the, the, robbed of the yeah exactly that's what, that, well, you, that's what i was saying right before what matters uh is you are so you baby. are so competitive like i could just see you being like no i wanted to give it uh, you're you're out of your mind uh, that's why i love you though that's why i love you that's really is now um now Sex with me and my wife, it's a little weird knowing there's a baby between us. Like during missionary, it's just kind of, so then we do it doggy style and then that's like her ass is a lot bigger than it used to be, which is fine. I like it. You know, I just, it's just bigger. Um, now, now for you and your man, like what, what, what were you guys doing? Um, no, he would, he would have the same thing. He was just like, he feels weird. It's awkward. Like he doesn't want to like touch the baby and all that crap. But I had to tell him, dude, like... It's not even possible, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so you you like don't worry about. It. I, I I mean just. Quit just... asking me that. Oh, all right, okay. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to relate to you. I'm just trying to. I, I feel like we have this in common. <laughs> you know, like we we're, we're, we're very relatable uh, people. So <laughs> so Juliana the fighter. So have you got back to the gym yet? Yeah, I have. Uh, you know, when you have a C-section, you are like out of commission. It's like a major abdominal surgery. So I had, uh, you know, I was out for like eight weeks and I still couldn't like do like a squat without like a bunch of pain. Um, and so I had a friend recommend me to this massage therapist who um, actually is a doctor and she specializes in this therapy that she has invented. It's called Mercy Air Therapy. It's for women who can't conceive, uh, can't get pregnant. She massages your uh, pelvic uh, area and then women can get pregnant all of a sudden or if you have a c-section you need to get this type of work done because your bowels will fuse on top of each other you know your uterus will be on top of your bladder and they'll fuse together and then if you laugh you'll pee a little bit so or like you won't be able to have your abs go back together the same way or you know you'll have um problems getting pregnant in the future. So this woman invented this Mercier therapy and she worked on me for about nine weeks. And um, it's very important that you get this type of work done so that your uh, organs aren't fused together and that the blood flow can go back to normal. So I had to get that done before I was getting back to working out, you know, because like I said, if I would squat down and do a squat, I was in a lot of pain. So I'm not in pain anymore. I just finished the therapy and I'm starting to work out more. But, you know, my number one priority is to be with my baby girl. She's so beautiful. She's gorgeous. I freaking love the heck out of her. And I feel like being in a fight camp is so selfish. And it's like I'm a freaking animal, like don't even breathe near me type of person. So I don't feel like she deserves that just yet. I don't feel like she deserves me to be a freaking hangry, angry person all the time. So I'm giving myself an opportunity to enjoy her, love her, give her the best version of myself. And as soon as, you know, I get down to a healthier weight, I'll start a fight camp. You know, I might take some jujitsu tournaments in the meantime and, and start off doing that. But right now I'm just trying to enjoy 
her and love her and, and just spend as much time with her as possible. It's my first baby. I'm never going to get this time back again. No, you know? your baby is so adorable, by the way. It. So cute. So oh, cute. She is. Um, like, I hate to be biased. But no, like, she is. Oh I God, can't believe it's so actually cute. your baby. So beautiful. It's crazy. I can't believe it came yeah. out of your body. Wow. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, now, did, did, did you, the man, are you, are you guys officially married yet? Are you going to get married? Um, yeah. I mean, I think at first, like, we went from, like, planning it to getting pregnant, and now we're like, let's just have the baby, see how that goes, and, and let's just focus on, on, you know, this first, and then we'll figure out the rest later. So right now we're just in you know, new mommy and daddy mode. And, and I'm sure we'll get around to that in the future, but I don't think there's much of a hurry right now. All right. So listeners, there's still hope. Okay. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All the people listening. All right. So, uh, some of the fights this week, and by the way, it's your man. I'm, I'm just kidding. All right. So, um, we have, <laughs> we have Jimmy Rivera versus Marlon Morales this week. Uh, who do we like in that yeah. card? Who do we, who do we like in that fight? Uh, is that Morales guy, the guy that uh, knocked out Aljamain? That's exactly who that is. Uh, and is Jimmy Rivera. I'm not familiar with Jimmy Rivera, but yeah, I think that Morales guy was kind of uh, legit, so I'll take him. Rivera's a guy who's 21-1. and one. He beat Uriah Faber. Uh, nobody wow. wants to fight this guy. He, he's, a, he's an animal. <laughs> Uh, he's, wow. he's a really, really good fighter. He, uh, he also beat, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's him. Also on the card, Vince Pichel, my man, is fighting Gregor Gillespie. He's an undefeated guy. I'm, I'm, you know who those guys I'm are? I'm taking Pichel all day long. Fuck yeah, that's my girl right there. Uh, Jake Ellenberger is fighting Ben Saunders, Killer B. Oh, gosh, I didn't even know Jake was still fighting. Um... <laughs> I don't know Ben Saunders too much, so hopefully, you know, I like Jake. I hope he wins. Me too. And uh, Gian Vellante versus Sam Alvey. <laughs> Gian Vellante is hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Sam Alvey is such a nice guy, though. I love Sam. Um, I don't know. That's a fans win type of fight. All right. UFC Chicago. Uh, are you going to go to that? Yes. Yeah, I will be there. I will be a special guest, and I will be ready to meet the fans, shake hands, kiss babies, <laughs> and watch some awesome fights. Uh, Yo Romero versus Robert Whitaker. Ooh, Yo Romero versus Robert Whitaker. Um, I like Robert Whitaker. I like Yo Romero too. Um, I don't know. I I, I like uh, Robert Whitaker. I want to choose him. By the way, are you are you are you, are you breastfeeding? No, I just uh, got out of an appointment. The baby's in the back seat crying. She doesn't like her car seat right now. She's no, at that stage. No, I'm saying, are you? you I, I'm saying, are you're, you? You are being warned. No, I'm saying, are you? Are you breastfeeding the baby, like in general? Mm. Yes, I am. Yes. Is that weird? Which is also really important. Uh, it's actually an incredibly beautiful thing, you know. Like my baby grows and gets bigger and is like completely nourished because of my body. So I think that that's like one of nature's miracles, and I think that it's an awesome thing. But yeah, I'm still breastfeeding. So that's like it's a hit. It's a weird thing. It's like you got to eat to make breast milk, but then you are trying to lose weight at the same time. So it's kind of like a a weird kind of thing that we got going on here. But yeah, no, I'm still breastfeeding. So maybe you could be like the Venezuelan breastfeeder instead of your nickname, the Venezuelan vixen. <laughs> yeah. It went from the ovarian barbarian <laughs> to the Venezuelan breastfeeding. <laughs> the <queen>. ovarian barbarian? <laughs> or I, permanent period tenure. This is why I like you. Permanent period. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was more for me when I'm moody. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can attest. I've seen the permanent period. Uh, we spent five hours at a car together. By the way, that was, most, that was one of the most fun trips to Vegas I ever had with me and you. Hanging out. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that, was, that was a good yeah, time. Yeah, that was the old Juliana. I, I like the old Juliana. I like the new Juliana, too, but the old Juliana was hilarious. So, Rafael Dos Anjos yeah. versus Colby Covington. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I don't know RDA, and I kind of know Colby. He's hilarious with all of his videos with, like, the girls in the bikinis and trying to be the man and stuff. Um I have a feeling he'll just try to wrestle him down and it'll be a big hump fest. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully Colby wins because he's from the Pacific Northwest. So I'll, I'll uh, support my, my fellow uh, 
Pacific Northwest play, so I hope Colby wins. I, I'm I'm rooting for Colby too. I, I don't like the bigoted stuff he says against Brazil and yada yada yada, but uh, I, I just take away that part. And I I don't know. I, there's something about Colby. I, I think it's an act. He says it's not an act. I'm pretty sure it's an act, and it's entertaining. Oh, uh, 110 percent. 110 percent. He's smart though. You know what I mean. You got to play the game. So he's he's going the Connor route. Not mm. pulling it off as well as Connor, but I I respect it. I appreciate it. Uh, Holly Holm versus Megan Anderson. I think Holly's gonna win. Yeah, me too. Me too. I like Megan, but I think the experience factor. She hasn't beaten anyone that is on that level. Uh, I don't know. She's 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 talked. Uh, I've I've heard her run her mouth about me uh, in the past, so I'm not the biggest fan of her. Oh, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> By the way, a girl that you beat, Kat Zingano is fighting the Belizean Bruiser in a battle of the a battle of the hot bombs as well. The MILF the MILF fight of the year. Uh, who do you think wins that fight? Yeah. Uh, you know, I I uh, what's what is her name? Marion. I I think Marion's gonna win. She's kind of been flying under the radar for a while, and she's she's pretty damn good. Yeah, very good, very good. She she beats a lot of people. I mean, she beats Sarah McMahon. Uh, she's she beating a lot of guys. By the way, Sarah's announced she's pregnant again too. Uh, Sarah, Sarah who? Sarah McMahon. You're kidding. No, she announced it today. She's having a baby. Oh, Sarah McMahon's pregnant again. Congratulations. To yes, her. yes. And Hanato is not the father. People think it's Hanato. Hanato. It's not Hanato. Uh, so CM Punk versus Mike Jackson. This is this is the, the, the <laughs> this is the fight of the year. Who do you think wins this fight? Uh, you know I. Uh, I was in rehab when I uh, lost my last fight and uh, I, I showed up and, and CM Punk was there. And I was like, wow, what's up, dude? So I met him. I got to know him for, you know, a couple sessions. He's a cool guy and uh, I'm gunning for him. I hope he wins. All right. There you go. Uh, I, Mike Jackson should win. He's got, he's, got, he's got good striking, good kickboxer. But there's a part of me that I, I give CM Punk a lot of credit. Everyone counted him out. Everyone got made. He made everyone made fun of him, including me. This and that. And he's he and he's he's still here. So I, I got. He's a very tenacious dude. Uh, Claudia Gadella versus Carla Esparza. Ooh, Claudia Gadella versus Carla Esparza. Um, I like Claudia, and I think she's an animal. And you know what? I like Carla, and I'm gonna pull for Carla only for the pure fact that she also won the Ultimate Fighter right after me. I spoke to her. Uh, at length before she got into the house. And I also think that, you know, she kind of got robbed a little bit. And I I, I want to see her uh, get the belt back again. I want to see her fight for the title. And, and I think that she's she's definitely got what it takes. She has a win over Rose as well. So Yeah, win um, over the champ. I, I hope, yep, I hope, I hope she wins. Uh, Overeem versus nice Curtis girl. Blades. Overeem's fighting on that Chicago card? Yes. I gotta get with it. Who do, who is he fighting? Curtis Blades. Ooh, well, Curtis is a hometown boy, and I will go with Curtis Blades. I hope he wins. I think he would, and I think people were upset that he was on the uh, undercard and CM Punk was on the main card. I could see why. Oh, uh, he should be because he's <laughs> fighting for Chicago and he's from Chicago. Yeah, and then uh, Pitbull Andre Arlovski is taking on Ty Tuvasa. Who's really good? Nine and zero guy from Australia. Uh, He's a guy that's like all tatted everywhere. Has like ridiculous power. That's crazy. They're bringing two guys. Actually, three people from Australia. Because isn't that Megan from Australia too? Megan's from Australia. Yes. Yeah, Megan's from Australia. Whitaker's from Australia. And now you say that Arlovski's opponent's from Australia too. Um, I, I want Arlovski to win. I like him, and uh, he's also from Chicago. So I hope he wins. I, I hope he wins too, but I don't think he's going to win. That other guy got serious power. Yeah, it's like I, Chicago versus Australia. That's crazy. Clay Guida versus Bobby Green on that card. Ah, oh, they're fighting. Yes. Uh, Clay Guida versus Bobby Green. I like Bobby Green a lot, but I love Clay. Clay is from here. I, I want Clay to win. I want Clay to win too. I like Clay. He's, he's a giant kid. Uh, also on that card, oh, Joseph yeah. Benavidez versus Sergio Pettis. Stop it. Yes. Um, Joseph Benavides, I want Joey B to win. This is, uh, you want Joe, I feel, I feel like I'm like, I'm like getting you back at the fighting right now. You're like, what? I uh, did Well, no, like, obviously I knew that these people were, you know, still in the game. They're not out. Right. But I didn't realize what the card was. I, when did they put the card out? But this card is stacked, it sounds like. And Rashad Evans versus Anthony Lionheart Smith is on this card. I don't know who Anthony Lionheart Smith is, so go Rashad. He's a guy that beat Hector Lombard. He got knocked out his last fight, 
Uh, he's a really good guy. He's 28 and 13. He, he hated Diego Sanchez because Diego took his, his nickname, Lionheart. Uh, but now they're cool. So, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, then uh, also on this card, Ricardo Lamas versus Mursad Bektik. Oh, wow. No, I want Ricardo to win. I love that guy. Yeah, but Bektik is no joke. He's from Bosnia. Yeah, but... Chained with ATT. Is he? Yeah, he's good. Oh, wow. He's good. He's good. Wow. Uh, are you going to be in Vegas for fight well, week? I, I don't know, actually. I haven't got any sort of thing, like, come down or whatever, so I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, I'll I'll be there. I would love for you to be there, since since you missed my oh, wedding. Oh, I'm sure you will be there. Since you were right at my it's wedding. Be epic, I'm sure. Since you didn't show up to my wedding, by the way, just so you know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was super preggers. It's all good. I I totally understand. Uh, you're allowed to be super preggers. Uh, you're you're pregnant. Misha's pregnant. Uh, yeah. Uh, who else is pregnant? A lot of people are pregnant. Sarah now, now. No, uh, who is? Oh, now Sarah you yeah, said yeah, yeah. Sarah McMahon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. What are your thoughts? I think that you're. If, well, when you come back, you're a fight away from starting to put a title. I mean, I mean, the title. I mean, you you got to think that, right? I mean, Nunez is obviously the champion. What did you think of Nunez Pennington? Boo. <laughs> what? Because you want Raquel to win? They're friends, and she probably could have finished her inside of one or two rounds, but because they're friends, she let it go longer, and probably didn't want to like put more of like I don't know about that was that was lame. Really? You, th- you thought she was kind of going easy on her? Yeah, I think she could have finished her in the first round, for sure. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so who now? she eased up on her. So who, who do you think Nunez should fight next? Um, I don't know, me when I come back. <laughs> she said that she would fight me after she beat Misha. She said that I was next in line and that she would fight me, and then she took the money fight and fought Ronda. So then I had to take another fight instead of just fighting for the title. But, you know, I had fought all those girls in the ultimate fighter. I beat them all. And then I fought three more people after that and won all those fights too. So at that point, I think I was seven to no and thought that I rightfully deserved the title. I mean, there was girls that were freaking Oh and two getting title shots before me. And I thought that that was ridiculous. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I'll fight her. <laughs> I was campaigning for you. What, how, what, what are your thoughts about Tatiana Suarez? Who? <laughs> Tatiana Suarez. Oh, Suarez. I thought you said Flores. I was like, I didn't even know there was a girl in Florida. Love her. Love her. She's fantastic. Yeah, I think she's got a legit uh, run in her. I think she's, I mean, she just ran through that other girl from uh, from Mexico. Uh, oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, Tatiana Suarez is legit, legit. She's as legit as they come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, listen, Juliana, I know you don't have to give interviews. I know you've been uh, kind of MIA, and uh, I don't blame you, but you look great. Your baby's adorable. Your husband seems like a nice guy. Uh, I met him. Seems like a real class act. Tough guy, too. A guy that I don't want to fuck with. Yeah. He's a, a, a black belt, right? Right. Yes, yes, okay. So we're looking to maybe come back in, what's it, we're in August now? You think maybe New Year's Eve? Uh, yeah, sometime around there. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm ready to come back. I just got to put in the work and, and find time and, and make, it, make it possible. So I would say, you know, yeah, a little under a year, maybe in the beginning of the year next year or maybe at the end of this year. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I love it. Well, thank you for everything, and uh, you're a great woman. I'm a big fan, big friend, and hopefully I'll see you soon. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank Have you. Have a good one. Thanks, Juliana. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. That was Juliana Pena. She's awesome. Love that person. Just a good friend, good person. Great ambassador to the sport. Good mom now. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So we're calling Kevin, Kelvin Gastelum. Kevin. I've known him for how many years? Still call him Kevin. Uh, you can't not say the L. But we're calling Kelvin Gastelum. And we're going to see what's going on with him. Yo, is this Kelvin Gastelum? My man. How are you Adam doing? Hunter, how are you? Buddy? Good. Good. How you doing, man? What are you up to? I'm doing good, man. I'm out running some errands. Nice. What are you uh, sh- uh food shopping? What are you doing? 
Yeah, just I'm I'm at the bank right now. Actually, I, I bet you are, man. Uh, I bet cashing that <laughs> cashing those checks, man. Win over Jacare. Damn, 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 damn. That was the fight that I was like, I knew you were gonna win, but I was like, this is gonna be tough, man. This guy is a tough, tough battle. Was it harder than you thought it was gonna be? Was it easier? Talk to me. Oh man, I just remember sitting back there thinking it was one of the hardest fights I've ever had. I was I actually had a smile on my face. I don't know why, but I was happy that I was. That I had won it, obviously. But I just remember thinking this was a hard fight. <laughs> now, when he gets you down in the first round, like, I, what, I, is any part of your head going, "Oh shit, I'm I'm with one of the best jujitsu people in the world. I should be oh, getting choked right now." That's all that was on my mind. That's all that was on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, no. As soon as he got mount, I remember thinking, as soon as he got mount. I'm like, all right, this is it. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> he mounted me. I'm done. Really? But did yeah, I, no, it ran through my mind. But um, did but any? No, I mean, every every single position, every everything that happened in the fight, we trained for. Yeah, but you're, I mean, you're, I mean, te- I mean, technically, you're a blue belt, right? Brown. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. So you are a brown belt. So, but yeah. but a guy like that should be able to choke you out, right? In the first round, you're not that sweaty. I mean, technically, I mean, people say, okay, if this fight goes to the ground in the first round, Kelvin's getting tapped. But right. are you just fighting for your life at that point? Was it easier than, than you thought it was going to be, de- 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 defending those chokes? If you can, yes, please. Thank you. I'm sorry, bro. Was it easier than you thought it was going to be to defend those chokes in the first round? I, you know what, I thought it was hard, you know, everything was, you know, when he had that arm, when he had that arm, uh, that arm bar, and it was really tight, I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty good, you know what I mean, I, I can see why he wasted a lot of energy on it, because it was, it was deep, you know, it was really deep, he was really trying to rip that arm off. So he, he, I know how he expended a lot of energy there. But a guy like that, though, like if, if you're in practice and a guy like Jackeray has you in an arm bar, do you tap right away? <laughs> yeah, probably. Like, so you, I mean, you, so you have tapped to those kind of moves in practice before? I mean, you have to really have, I mean, yeah, I've tapped to people that have got me in an arm bar, yeah. So, like, that's but what I've always typically. Typically, I would tap. Yeah, I guess, but not in a fight. I mean, in a fight, it's different. Yeah, but that's what I, that's what I'm always curious about. Is that like, okay, you know, they say in practice, don't be a tough guy, don't go crazy, don't break your arm, go out, don't go out cold. So, do you think sometimes guys get used to tapping in the gym when people have those arm bars like that, and then when they get into a fight, it's almost like, okay, you got me when they actually weren't in as much damage as they probably thought they were, or in, in as much trouble. Uh, whereas, right. right. I understand the question, but I, I think uh, it could be a force of habit, I guess, for some guys. But I don't know. You got to go in there thinking, like, this is the fight. This is it. This is when when it should matter. And this is, you know, I'm going to go until until it's it's about to be broken, you know, not not when they have the position. Yeah, no, like a guy like you knows, like a guy like you can just, you know when it's a fight and when it's not a fight. Like people always say, like, like soccer moms tap you in practice. Like it just like you get taken down by everybody. I mean, the guy like the coach's son who's three can like heel hook you. But when it comes to a fight, you're knocking fuckers out and you're not tapping. Like you're able well, to do you're able to do I, that. I don't I don't know about soccer moms <laughs> tapping me out or anything. But uh but you know, there there is a certain level in the gym that I keep to where to to and then there's another certain level that I have inside the octagon. It's just different for me. No, I love it because when you I'm know? slacking off in the gym, I'm always like, "Well, Kelvin slacks off, and look how good he is." So it's that you you, you, <laughs> yeah. you definitely you inspire me, brother. Thank you for inspiring me to not work hard <laughs> at the gym. So thank you. So that's that's well, amazing. You're welcome. I'm glad to be an inspiration <laughs> to many. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm mess with you. You're you're inspiring on, on many different levels. On just being a good person and being a, a great athlete and and doing doing 
doing what you do. Uh, I was so proud of you, man. Now, I remember I met with you a couple, I went, I went to your house, by the way, which I go to your house in Orange County. There's a guy giving haircuts in the kitchen. There's like 12 people living in the living room. Uh, I don't know who these people are. Like your high school roommate was yeah. there. Like there was somebody, there was a girl giving birth in like one of the bathrooms. Uh, it, it was crazy. It was, it was madness. And, and, then, and then you have all your high school wrestling trophies everywhere. It was, it was, that's, that, was that was really sweet. But it, it was a little weird, right? I mean. You got it down to a T, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember going there. It was right after the Wyman fight, and you said, "I'm going back down to 170 unless I fight Anderson Silva." Now here you are. You you knocked out Bisbing. Uh, you beat Jacare. Are we staying at 85? Or are we going back to 170? Well, I still want to go down to 170, but I guess right now my focus has changed. Now that I'm doing well over at 185, and I feel good where I'm at right now. So my focus has changed a little bit more. Towards uh, 185 right now, my focus is on winning the winning, fighting for the 185 title. I mean, but, I mean, nobody but, can tell you're not going to uh, win it. Doesn't mean doesn't mean once I get the 185 title, doesn't mean I won't go back down and fight for that 170 title. I don't see why not. What do you walk around at? Like 200, 205. Which is not hard. I mean, that's not that bad to go down to like 170. I mean, you pretty much and you eat whatever you want, right? Yeah, in moderation. <laughs> right. Okay. Got it. <laughs> uh, got it. Moderation. Okay. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, now, uh, well, who do you think wins? By the way, Romero or uh, Whitaker? That's tough. That's tough because Romero looked so good in his last fight against Rockhold, and. Um, and Whitaker's coming off an injury and, and an illness. So we'll see how he comes back. Yeah, I know. We'll see if, we'll see if he will be able to repeat his his uh his performance against Romero, who looked so good against Rockhold. I mean, I think he, he looked you know, I don't think he's ever looked as good as he did in that fight. But Romero's like you know, sixty. Was, I mean he's well, I mean, he was coming forward, he was throwing combinations, he was being the aggressor. And, you know, where usually you see him kind of just being more of a relaxed fighter, looking for that one shot and not coming as forward. But in that little Rockwell fight, he came, he came to fight and knocked, knocked him out. It was, it was cool to see. It was crazy. The, yeah. The adjustments that he's made. What do you think about afterwards when he, when he was like trying to like talk to him and give him a speech and Romero, and Morocco was like, get me the fuck out of here. No, that was, that was, I, I thought, um, well, there's two sides to it, you know. I thought it was a little disrespectful for Rockhold to kind of just do, <laughs> just sit there and not even look him in the eye after getting knocked out. Like, show a little respect. And but the, but at the same time, you did, you know, Romero did just get to get got done knocking him out and shouldn't have been in his face that much. Right. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he, the guy didn't know where he was. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you think his chin is gone? People are saying his chin's gone, as far as Rockhold. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to say. Right. 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 Uh, I, yeah, I know Rockhold's so good. Um, but it seems like guys that you fight retire. Like you retired Tim Kennedy, Bisbing just retired. Uh, are you on this retiring tour? Do you just want to go around retiring people? <laughs> I retire more people than Social Security. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, <laughs> no, that's a bottle of green. But um, no, I mean, I'm just trying to fight the best guys. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm just trying to fight the ranked fighters. Nobody's taking the fights that I fight. I think I feel like I'm one of the most active middleweights there has been, and fighting top ten guys. Yeah, you're, you're going champions. to you go to Brazil, and you're fighting Jacare in Brazil. I mean that is insane. Uh, yeah, I know. Did they did did they show you love over there? Were they training you will die? Uh, were they happy for you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean I had a lot of respect, but at the end of the day, everybody's like, "We're rooting for Jacare." At the end of the day, <laughs> we like you. We like you, but at the end of the day, we're rooting for Jacare. <laughs> no, yeah. Now, did they consider you Mexican or American over there? 
They call me a gringo. They call me an American. <laughs> they called you a gringo? <laughs> yeah. This is this the first time you've ever been called gringo in your life? It is. That's hysterical. Well, <laughs> the good. For, I think I'm going to start calling you Gringo for now on. <laughs> hey, Gringo. That that's amazing. Damn it. That that's awesome. I mean, that, I mean, you are American, obviously, but it's just funny that like when you go somewhere else, you realize how American you are. Uh, because, yeah. Oh yeah. No, but it's but they call every, uh, anybody that's not Brazilian Gringos. Really, they, that's what they call the tourists. Did your mom come with you to uh, Brazil? No. Nobody came. Nobody wants to travel that much. What about your girlfriend? She showed up? No. Nope. What? <laughs> Not even her. Uh, now, is she, is, uh, she, is she still in college? Last time we talked, she was like uh, a freshman and she was in a sorority and she had like, uh, she was, she was, she was uh, living in the dorm. She, she, she graduated from uh, LSU. Oh, nice. So she's 25 now? 24? 23? She's 24, yeah. Nice. And this is pretty, this is what, two years now? Yeah, that's, which is crazy. Wow. Are you going to put a ring on it? Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll, at, least, at least give her a donut, you know? you know? I'm sure you have a couple extra donuts around. Just put one of those on her finger. No, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Dude, Kelvin, this girl, I, I've seen pictures with you together. You, you're obviously in love with her. But I, I think her friends don't believe that you're really yeah. her boyfriend because you're never around... Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, how how often do you see her? That's true. What's that? Does she still live in Louisiana, or is she in Orange County now? Nah, she she still lives in Louisiana. So how often do you see her? Yeah, she she comes down and sees me during camp, and then when I'm off camp, uh, I I go and see her, and she comes and sees me quite a bit too. So she's more like a pen pal than like a girlfriend. Would you, would you say? I'm more like a long distance. On average, booty call. Oh, come on. Now, is it hard? Because I know women love you. I talk to girls all the time. I, 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 there was a fighter, actually, a really cute fighter that was, like, in love with you. Uh, her, her name is Luke Rockhold. Uh, no, 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 there was, a, uh, actually, no, it was, it was Luke Barnott. Um, no, but there was a, there was this really cute fighter, uh, who, who's, who rhymes as, uh, Melissa Marcia, who, who had a huge crush on you. I'm not sure, I think maybe she's in a relationship now. Is it hard to turn down all the, all the chicks? Nah, it's not hard at all, man. Is that because you don't like do it, or I like my girlfriend? Oh, okay. Have you have have you have you told her I love you yet or no? Yeah, I told her I love her. Already. It's been two years, man. Wow! 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 <laughs> How long did it take you to say I love you? Uh, as soon as I get him pregnant. Um. <laughs> so no, no, so Mike took about a second. <laughs> yeah, the first date. First date. Okay, now. <laughs> Now, okay, now here's what I want to do for the MMA awards, right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching this. I think this will be good for you, right? Uh, we're going to do a video. Uh, mm -hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Here. So, you know that song, Despacito? Despacito, yep. All right. So, um, uh, hold on. Let me see. Another one. Okay. So, so we're going to have you sing, I Love Cheetos, right? Like, instead of saying, I love what? I Love Cheetos. As well in, as I love Cheetos. As well as eating my burritos topped with some Doritos, followed by Tostitos. Right? We're gonna do a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do it for the MMA awards? Oh man. I think I would. I All right, would. good, That's good, funny. good. Because I like pitched it with you, and and they liked the idea. They were like, "You think Kelvin would do it?" Good, good, good. This is gonna go viral. This is gonna go viral, man. <laughs> <laughs> either that or the whole world's gonna call you gringo afterwards but either it's way go viral. it's gonna it better it go better viral hit over a million hits yes 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 1000 percent no 1000 <laughs> percent so uh now this weekend uh do we like my man jimmy rivera or marlon Moraes? Ooh. um you know what i think marlon Moraes can get it done for this weekend I, I want Jimmy though. I like Jimmy. I don't. I don't. I don't know Marlon, but I. I, I definitely want Jimmy. Uh, Gian Volante versus Jimmy, Sam Alvey. Jimmy's, Jimmy's tough as hell, man. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, Sam Alvey's fighting Gian Volante. Who would like in that one? Gian Volante and Sam Alvey. I got uh, Gian. 
Yeah, right? Hell yeah. Mm, yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Uh, are you are you going to the uh, Chicago card? I am going to the Chicago card. You know that's the best card of the year, right? I mean, oh, aside Is it? from... Hold, do you know who's on that card? There's so many good fights in that card. I just can't remember them all off the top of my head. Yeah, I was just I was just talking about this with um uh we we had uh Juliana Pena on the, on the, on, the, on the podcast by the way, uh who just gave birth oh, nice. to a beautiful baby girl. She's hot. She's right. A, I follow her on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, she's a, she's a, she's a hottie. You would hit that, right? If you were if you were single. If I was single, maybe I would ask her out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Rafael dos Anjos versus Colby Covington. Colby Covington and Rafael. I think um, I think Hoffa. Hoffa will take that. He's got good wrestling, good grappling. And and probably better striking, most likely better striking. So, do you yeah. do you train with him? I used to train with him. He used to train with us at Kings. Yeah. Uh, how is he? He's oh, he's a monster, bro. He's a monster. He's a he's a savage. By the way, you, you savage could come. By the way, our friend Jake Ellenberger is fighting this week against Ben Saunders. How's how's Jake looking? Uh, Jake Jake uh, tra- trains over at Ruka now. So he uh. hasn't been with us for a while now. Yeah, I see him with uh, Pico all the time, uh, Aaron Pico. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I seen that too. Yeah, he's doing he's doing his own thing somewhere else. Right, he right. At Kings. Uh, CM Punk versus Mike Jackson, also on that card. Ooh, um, man, I hope the best for CM Punk at the, at this point. <laughs> all right, that's a good answer. Uh, Claudia Gadella, <laughs> Cla- Claudia De- Gadella versus Carla Esparza. Ooh, Claudia Gadella and Claudia and Sparza. I think Claudia Gadella gets it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's a hottie. Uh, man, she's a, she's a uh, triplet too. Also, Rashad Evans versus Anthony Smith. Um, uh, uh, Smith. Mm, Rashad Evans. Hopefully, I think he should be able to win that. But if he doesn't, I hope it. I hope he calls it a day because I I don't want to see him take any more damage. You know. Yeah, unnecessary damage. No, now that he's older. Uh, Megan Anderson versus Holly Holm. Oh, that's a toughie. We haven't seen Megan compete inside the octagon yet. Yeah. Um, but I don't think Holly's won a fight in a few fights. She's kind of a downside right now. Yeah. So I'm going to say Megan for that one. So UFC 226, that card in Las Vegas. I'll be there all week. Daniel Cormier versus Steve Miocic. Who do we like in that one? Ooh, you know what? I think Cormier can get it done with his wrestling. Really? I think uh, I don't think uh, Neo Chicks has faced a, a wrestler like like uh, Cormier. He has it, but still, you don't think he's just too big for him? He's six four. Cormier is five yeah, eleven. But, but Cormier was fighting a heavyweight at the beginning of his. Yeah, but that but career. that was back so in like the eighties. He won that strike force pre. He did, but he fought Bigfoot uh, Silva, whose chin was gone. And Josh Barnett, who went into that fight injured, I think. But yeah, but he did win. He did win. Uh, man, I, I like DC. I just think Stevie is too big. I just think he's too big. Yeah, he is big. He's a big boy. Uh, Max Holloway versus Brian Ortega. Oof, that's a toughie. I'm going to say, uh, man, that's a tough one. I can't say. <laughs> Derek Lewis versus, the Black, uh, versus Ngannou. Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou. Oof. You know what? I like Derek Lewis winning that fight. Really? Yeah. Everybody's jumping off the Ngannou hype train because of the fight against Stipe. But before that, everyone was saying he's in the second coming of, uh, of, you know, I don't know. Not me. Not me. You weren't saying that? I was I was rooting for, for Stipe. Uh, but that's because you're a gringo. Uh, Michael, <laughs> Anthony Pettis versus Chiesa. Ooh, man! I like both guys. I think uh, Mike Kiesa might take that though. I think so too. I think Pettis is not into it anymore. I don't know why. It just it just seems like he's just his heart's not into it. it just kind of goes through the motions, right? Yeah, it seems like it's yeah. he's kind of peaked out in strike for us, and I hate to say that. Uh, Goken Saki versus Khalil Roundtree, battle of the strikers. Uh man, I mean. If Khalil can take it to the ground and take it take it to deep grounds, 
to uh, deep rounds, I think he can take it. But he's got to withstand the first storm. Yeah, which is going to be incredible. That guy's a fucking video game. Uh, but that's a big, that, exactly, that's a big if. Uh, your boy, okay. Uriah Hall, against Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa. Yeah, this one's interesting because uh, I haven't seen Paulo. We haven't seen Paulo Costa get very um, tested inside the octagon, you know. And I think Uriah is going to be able to bring him out, bring that, bring him out of his comfort zone for the first time, and uh, kind of challenge him in different ways that we haven't seen. So it'll be interesting to see whether he can withstand that kind of different style that Uriah brings. How's Uriah very doing? Deep striking style. So you, do you guys, you guys still talk? I'm sorry. Do you and Uriah still hang out? You guys still talk? Uh, yeah. Every now and then. Every now and then. he's based out of Vegas now, so whenever he comes down, I see him, but not very often. Gotcha, gotcha. But and then, we just pick up. It, but every time I see him, we just pick up where we left off. It's like I've been seeing him for weeks when we haven't talked. He's got an infectious smile, right? What's that? He's such a nice guy. He's got such a, like a, a warmth about him. You know, he's like, oh a, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he doesn't let in a lot of people, but the few people that he does, he's an awesome guy. Uh, Mike P- Mike Perry that. versus Yancy Medeiros. Um, that'd be that'd be interesting. You know, um, Yancy is a gamer, man. He'll he'll go in there and throw down, no matter what you throw at him. You can't put him away. That's what I'm scared of, though, is that he goes in there and makes a highlight reel out of Mike Perry because he hits so fucking hard. He does. He does. So you got. You can't get caught. You can't get caught. What do you think I about Perry think using that. the N word? <laughs> right. I mean, you know it bothers people. You know people are gonna get upset. Like, what's the point? Like, why? Yeah. I mean, I, why? I I'd rather just not even talk about him. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Good point. Another guy, Nick Diaz, also went to jail last week and. He just got to go, come on, man. These guys. Uh, oh, I heard. You know what? I heard about that. Yeah. Man, what is up with that? I, I don't know exactly what happened. That was all, the internet was blowing up with like, he choked a girl out. He, she broke her hip. He, he, got oh a, he, got, he beat up a bunch of cops. or the, uh, Just all this crazy shit. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what happened. This is all allegations. But I do know that Nick Diaz is, you know, he beat all the odds. You know, a kid from kid from poor kid from Stockton, him and his brother. They grew up, they, they rough. That you know, he 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 was he, he didn't have the easiest life. He's not the easiest guy, you know. But but he he look what he made out of himself, which is a, a is a household name amongst fighter fans at least. People love him. What what do you need to do this for? It's like what do you need to get in this kind of trouble? You have everything going for you. You've already, you know, get these. Yes, it sucks. Exactly right. He doesn't have. To prove himself to anybody, he doesn't have to do all these kinds of things. Yeah, he, he, you know, it's all about life choices. He could retire tomorrow, he, open up a dojo, and it, I, I feel like who wouldn't want to go to Nick Diaz's jujitsu academy? I mean, I'd go. I mean, give me a break. Right. I think he did, but um, man, he sh- should retire, open up a dispensary. <laughs> Too. All these guys. Now you got Nick Diaz. You got you got Conor McGregor with his antics. You got John Jones with his. I, I understand that fighting in a cage, you know, attracts a, a certain type of person, and sometimes that type of person just is the kind of person that lives on the edge and wants to kind of test, see how far we can push things. But you get to a point where you're so talented, and people look up to you, and 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 you do. I'm sorry if, you, if you're a professional athlete. You know, they're, they're, you know people are going to watch you. You know people are going to look up to you. How many people are going up to Nick Diaz every day and go, I love you, man. You're great. You're great. Yeah, so great. but he, he doesn't. He's, he's not the kind of person that kind of cares about that. No, but there is a little bit of responsibility. It, it just would be nice to have people, yeah, like, but, people like you. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't even – he disregards that, that responsibility. I know. I care about it. I just know I got a baby on the way. I got a daughter coming out in two months. And, and you know, when, when she says, Daddy, you know, what's a role model? I'm going to say Kelvin Gastelum is a role model. Frankie Edgar is a role model. Uh, you know, Phil Davis is a role model. Um, Demetrius Johnson is a role model. You know, you could, I, I could point to the guys and be like, Ben Askren, th- these are people that you want to emulate. Tyron Woodley. You got, you got these people like that. And, it, and, it, and I'm sure, like, 
you know, in a lot of ways, John Jones is a role model, and, and, and Nick Diaz. I'm sure that they do a lot of good things. The problem is, is that you do these other things that you know people are going to remember you by. Remember, oh, this guy's a, you know cocaine and smacked into a pregnant chick and took off, and this dude. Yeah, out well, it. the just... problem is now we're at a place and age where they make the good things look bad and the bad things look good, like yeah. throwing dollies at a bus and doing cocaine and doing steroids and. You know, doing but, but, these kinds of behavior, having these kinds of behaviors gets you headlines. But why you don't know? you do that kind of stuff? Like, what is it about you, Kelvin, that keeps you on the straight and narrow? I was just born with different mor- mora- morality. But you weren't born with them. As, I mean, everybody was born I the same way. I have a different code. I have a different uh, view of the world than they do. But you didn't have a dad. Your dad wasn't around. You came from a poor area, you know? Like, right. I mean, you, you have a lot, a lot of excuses to be a fuck Well, up. it's about choices. It's about choices. It's about having a code, you know, instilled in you from a young age, you, you know? I know the kind of person that I want to set out to be, and that's what, you know, aspire to be. And, and they just don't have that. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate because it's a... It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, yeah, look, not, not everyone's going to be Cranky Edgar, but you don't have to just uh, piss it away. You know, you don't have to just go out of your way to just, it's like, come on, man. But, you know, and it's a shame because not many people have that kind of talent. I mean, a guy like you, you know, you, everything that you get, you've earned. Everything you've got. I mean, what, you're 5'10", you're not, you weren't the best athlete. You won the state title in Arizona. You know, you, you boxed for two years. You were the last pick on the Ultimate Fighter. You won the whole fucking thing, right? Then, then they threw you to the wolves. Tim Kennedy says, I'm going to teach him a lesson from it for not making weight. I'm going I'm to teach him. You fucking stop him. They put, they put you, yeah. and you and you fight Weidman. You fucking, you're like, I'll fight Weidman. And then you knock out Bisbing, the former champion of the world. You fucking knock him out in one round. I mean, you, you, everything you did, you get, you, and you keep coming back, which is great, man. It's, it's, it's inspiring, well, bro. I, I have an attitude of not being entitled. Not like we see the generation of today. Everybody feels so entitled. Everybody thinks they deserve this and that. And I actually grew up the opposite way. You know, I, I actually felt like I wasn't entitled to anything, which made me want to work for everything. I didn't feel like I deserved anything, which made me want to gain everything that I have. So... It's just a different mentality now these days. I love it, man. Well, I wish more kids would have. I, I think a lot of it also has to be from like growing up, you know, Latino uh, in the U.S. You got you. They work harder. Not they. Not everybody. Not every Latino works harder. But a lot of times, you're right. You, you, you know, I know it from coaching wrestling. It's 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 the immigrant mentality. It's it's, it's the people that that they they don't. They don't want handouts. They're like, fuck it. I want to work harder. I, I know from the kids, the parents I coach, the kids that I coach, it's, it's always like the, 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 I got a kid from Chechnya, his father, oh, he's fine. I'm like, his arm's broken. Put him back in. You know, like you get right. these, you get these kids that are just like, they, they want it. They want it more. They're hungrier. Not all yeah. the time. No, no, yeah, not all. No, I'm, like I'm generalizing. Said, I, I never had any of the physical attributes. I just tried and to work harder than everybody else. I love it. I'm the same way. I'm I'm a comedian who fucking stutters with a speech impediment, uh, and I have to go out and communicate, make people laugh every day. I, I get it, man. <laughs> yeah. I get it, and I freaking love it, man. I love it, and I love the fact that you take time to my podcast, man. I'm such a big fan of yours, Kelvin. Even though you missed my birthday party, uh, and you told Bro, me I was I was sorry. I was in in Arizona. Uh, it's all right. It's okay. You'll make you'll make the next one. Uh, yes, I will. I'll bring you a big old. Bag of goodies. Thanks, yeah. yeah you'll, you'll, you'll give me a, 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 a half-eaten cake. Uh, so I wonder who. <laughs> but listen, so uh, are you are you back in L.A. now? Yeah, I'm back in Huntington, but um, not. Yeah, I'm only here for a short while, and then I go out um, to to Mexico for, to relax a few days before I head out to Chicago. Nice. Well, flights. when you come back from Chicago, we'll definitely hang out. Yes, sir. Would love that, brother. Kelvin, you're, you're the best, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, my man. You too. Take care. 
so Jeremy. So then, like, so he gets knocked out, but his dad and his stepmom, who's actually kind of hot, actually, they uh, they come to my show with like and bring like fifty people from Canada, and Mitch is like in the hotel crying, right? Like after the fight, he's like in the hospital. I was in a wheelchair and I met Christy Mack. I didn't tell you that one, did I? No, you were in a wheelchair. I met. She, she was in the same hospital with you. Yeah, like uh, my stalker was there. Her best friend is Christy Mack, and the first story while I'm on fucking a bunch of pain meds is uh, how she got like, "Hello, how are you?" And then she talked about how she got syphilis in her eye because the dude with syphilis. In her <laughs> so she was in the hospital because she had syphilis in her eye. No, because she, her friend was her stalker. Her best friend was my stalker. And then brought her to come see you. Yeah. Got it. So he's in the so he's in the hospital and like I thought he was gonna come. We, we were a guy. I, I actually I, I I put money on Mitch. I still think Mitch could beat Joe Duffy if like he hadn't broken his whole body with it within four seconds, right? So I'm like I'm like FaceTiming him, and I'm like, hey man, like dude, cheer up. And you can just see how sad he is. I'm in the back of the comedy club, about to go on. I'm like, hey man, look, you got a look. You're you're in the UFC. You got a great family. You got a great dad. You got a hot girlfriend. And I look at him and he, he just gets like super sad. <laughs> And I'm like, what, you guys broke up? And he's like, I have to go, man. It was like, it was so bad, dude. It was so bad. I would love to do a movie like Slapshot about kind of like an aging um, UFC league, you know, like Slapshot. Yeah. With just like a bunch of dudes, you know, that are just trying to fucking get back into the game or whatever. All the great characters that are involved. It could be hysterical, don't you think? Absolutely. It's, I think it's called Bellator. Right, uh, but, I mean, but you know but, what I mean. But, but yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Because I I like I had a wait. You're, we're recording it right now. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't realize. It's it. okay. Oh. I'll, I, dude, I'm not gonna probably, I'm not gonna use any of it. Or yeah. <laughs> so. so what what makes you? Because when you tear your meniscus, that's real. Oh yeah. So at what point, like, what, what was the move? Your body just gave out. I I, went, I got hit from like top of the head and I went to take a step correction step uh -huh. and I just felt it like blow as soon as I put all my weight okay and I ended up doing like the fucking Ric Flair fall right like, face first right and I'm on my back and it is like the most terrifying fucking moment because you can't I couldn't lift my legs so I knew my legs was fucked and you got this big ass Irishman that's ready to, like with murder in his eyes yeah. and I like I can't move you guys I, eight to one favorite Duffy was eight to one favorite over you oh what oh good <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> See, so, so I, I tore my meniscus falling off a, a stool while doing stand-up. So I think you and I have very similar experiences. <laughs> very related. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In Chicago. Wait, but but see, unlike you, I played through. Wait, no, but no, okay? but no, but Mitch, and I, I, thought, I had three hundred people bearing down on me. The thing you was, had one Irishman. Okay, <laughs> let's just think about that for a second. You had one fucking angry, possibly drunken Irishman. I had 300 people going, you're a fucking actor, you're kidding yourself, and I played through. But, so maybe you should have sucked it up. But Mitch, I thought that uh, you were actually pulling guard in that fight against Duffy. Like, I thought, like, I, I'm like, if it goes to the ground, Mitch can beat him. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, were you, but you you were still trying to fight on, though. Yeah, I tried to roll through, go inverted for uh, leg lock, just didn't, couldn't finish it. Unfortunately, you okay? Yeah, I'm just looking for my phone, I'm sure it's so, in the middle of this change of jaw disaster. <laughs> I'm a student and a fighter. And Dude, you're 40, I just do the bro. Best I can. You're 40. I'm a student. I'm not 40. You're 40. That's true. I am 40. <laughs> what, are you, what are you? 34? 32. 32. 32. You seem older because you're Canadian. Because I'm angry. Yeah. Because like, you've done a lot. Yeah. Because I'm like fucking what's his name? Clint Eastwood in Grand Torino. Did anybody uh, ever take up your offer? Because he was he's trying to get a jujitsu super fight. Like they do, they 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 sent him to like Calgary to fight like their best guy. Yeah. This guy had like a, a, a two hundred pound weight advantage over him, and Mitch just fucked him up, and the whole crowd was booing him. That was pretty damn awesome. See, that's awesome. As they're like talking about how awesome he is, as I'm beating the shit out of him <laughs> on top, and like I'm posting on his face and and trying to like just squish him, and I wasn't right. even trying to finish him till the end. Now that super fight, did you make any money for that? Yeah, I made a couple grand. That's and then good. sponsors, so he's good. He's fun. Yeah, no, that guy had he had what he had like what fifty pounds on you? Yeah, he had probably about fifty and he was he was six foot six. Fuck. But like the key is just to be as fucking mean as possible when you're little. But, but it takes away a lot of your options though, right? The guy's six six. Well, like he tried to wrestle me and I tried to snap his face into the mat, so he 
pulled card and then I squished him. Jeremy, you ever get into a fight in real life? Yes, I have been in fights. Um, the good news about me is I'm always underestimated. Do you know what I mean? Which is really great. But, I, you know, I mean, I have a background. I played high school football and I was the only white boy and I had to fucking 4,000 kids in my school, Division One. You know, like, you know, we lost in the... Division One high school? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> well, I mean, when you have... We're the largest high school in, in yeah, Chicago, yeah. so we lost in the semifinals. A guy kicked a field goal to beat us. He literally, this badass, he p- took back his helmet just before he kicked the field goal and it said, fuck you, on his headband, looked at our stadium, just basically said, fuck you, put his helmet back down, kicked the field goal and beat us. You had a stadium in high school? Yeah, huge stadium. Wow. So wait, so the fights, when was, how many fights have you been in? Um, two proper fights. And the last one was in college, so it was in 1937. <laughs> and um, the, the problem was, he sucker punched me, Behind 7-Eleven And I do actually have a chin Which is the good No, three Three solid fights um, And he sucker punched me And um, I ended up You know Taking him down And getting on top of him And As I had his eye In my hand His eye? Yeah I stopped myself And went What am I doing? Do you know what I mean? Like I turned into something That was not pretty You know It's like I went into You were going to go Gauge his eye out? Yeah I, Because he was trying to kill me He sucker punched me And wanted to kill me we were in an alley. I had to defend myself. All right. Do you know what I mean? So that's when I stopped myself, and the cops came at that moment anyway. But I got scared. I got I scared myself. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course. You don't want to eye gouge. Yeah, yeah. So that was one fight. What were the other two? <laughs> uh, the other two were um, one was a uh, guy was anti-Semitic in high school, and he was Black o- guy? older. No, white dude, big mustache. You know, kind of like a, let's make America great again type of dude. You know what I mean? took Hitler's phrase and kind of like turned it for his own you know yeah. use and once again sucker punched me sucker punched me hard I was a sophomore he was a senior mustache you know older dude much bigger and I ran after him and started doing okay but then they held me back and they had people held my arms while he laid into me and uh, so that didn't go well Oh, fuck. See, that, was, that fight was like... Yeah, but that was cheap. So his, his friends were holding you back while he was punching you? Right. How many punches did he get off? It's hard to say, but like I say, I'm kind of a... Uh, I'm very Johnny Hendricks-like in terms of stature. You always miss weight? I always miss weight. <laughs> I, have an, I have an aggressive neck beard. <laughs> and then the third, what was the third fight you got into? Um, a, a gentleman named Peanut. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and I did... You know, he was going off on my mother... I took him down and grounded pound from on top. How then, old were you? Uh, that was uh, eighth grade. So your ground and pound it seemed like every fight you got into the, you the ground and pound. I think I'm more impressed with the wrestling. Yeah. Staying on top. That's, well, that's the key. Well, the, here's the thing. You got you got, I, you know in this life you have to know your limitations, right? And because I was I grew up form tackling, okay, because I was a linebacker. Yeah. So that's my reference as an athlete. I can form tackle. I can take you down, right? And one time I was training with Rashad Evans. I don't mean to name drop. <laughs> But where was this? Um, we were training actually at Equinox in, in Hollywood. I trained with Eve Edwards as well. He held yeah. the pass for me. But I, I tried to take um, Rashad down, and this is when he was walking around at about two thirty five. Right. And I hurt my neck trying to take him <laughs> down. Okay. But I did mean, he know you tried to take him down, or you? You just... know, he he knew. He I mean, he saw every move I was trying to do on. But like, him. did you go behind him and try to take him down? This is when he was literally holding the belt. Oh, wow. and, and he was and he was in between fights, and he was walking around at about two thirty five. Knocked out Chuck. Yeah, and you know he his 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 forte is wrestling. Of course. But he literally, when you slam into him and try to take him down, it was like running into a wall as hard as you could. But you guys were sparring. Like I don't understand why he's training with you at Equinox. Like the, uh, <laughs> a lot. Of, I have a lot of questions about okay. this one. Well, because you know I love to train. He was there. He's a buddy of mine. I brought him in. He's, he had he hadn't trained in a while, and guy I was training with is an MMA guy and I was trying to show off like hey man I've been doing some stuff and let's do some moves and he was an an immovable force yeah of course you know what I mean so nice uh, so did he laugh at you when you fell on your head well he you know I mean he he was laughing but it wasn't so overt do you know what I mean trying to keep it under wraps 
Yeah, he tried and then to he, nice him up. But then, you, but yeah, you tell me a lot of times, like we talk about fighting and stuff, because you're a big MMA fan, you're yeah. a huge boxing fan. Yeah. But you train at a, a Wild Card West, right? Or or at uh, Unbreakable Gym? I mean, I, I, I went to Unbreakable for a minute, but uh, Jake Laser is, is great. He's very aggressive. Oh. You know, Jay's very aggressive. I, I, I got level. mad at Jay. We, we were rolling, and he, it was my first day of jiu-jitsu, and he goes for a, uh, a heel hook. Is and that then the my, guy who blew your leg? No, no. But then, but Epstein yelled at him like, "What are you doing? You're gonna break his leg." Because I was like, we were, I was doing better than him in wrestling. And he goes, "Well, he's gotta learn somehow." And like, wow. yeah, not the first day, you know. Like, Glazier was definitely in it to win it. Uh, so, but he's he's a very strong guy, Glazier. He's built like a fire hydrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you and uh, so you now did you uh see Demi Lovato when you were there? I did not see. I did not see her when, when I was there. No, I was. Um, I was training with guys like Army Hammer. So it was a bunch of actors there. And we were having a great time, and um, a lot of NFL players. And we're having a great time. It's fun because you know actors love to, to train with pro athletes, and they love you know. To, it's kind of like I think they ultimately want to be actors, and we want to be athletes. Yeah. So it's fun to do that. But then- at one point, Sean Merriman came over. Because I was, I was striking and then hitting the ground, doing burpees, getting up and doing just a lot of striking. And at one point, and I thought I was going to die. Like, I literally was like, you know, blood in the lungs. I was, you know, it wasn't a good look. And Sean Merriman came over and he looked at the guy that was training me. He goes, are you trying to kill him? Like, yeah. literally, it's enough. What yeah. are you doing? And this guy found out his girlfriend had just broken up with him. So I think he was trying to kill me. He was oh, very God. frustrated. He's taking it out on you. Yeah. Meanwhile, Merriman, I'm waiting for him to make his uh, debut. Because he... He's a great athlete. Great athlete. Great athlete. He could do surprise some people now you also you were telling me you trained with John Cusack that was a million years ago but you get hmm. yeah it was a million million years ago and he's a, he's a you know he's very prolific in, in kickboxing yeah, yeah I remember yeah. I remember when that, that one movie he did one of my favorite movies uh, Say Anything yes he, he, he was like kickboxing is a sport of the future exactly yeah yeah, yeah he's um, he studied with Don the Dragon Wilson and um Benny the Jet Arquitas. Benny the Jet. And, yeah. We're very, always, yeah. A lot of consistency with those guys. And so, he's real tall and long. And so, Mitch, if, let's say, uh, PFL or... Oh, you don't want to hear more about my fight stories? <laughs> so let's Jesus say, let's, let's say if PFL... A celebration of things no one will listen to. No, come it. on. People are going to love this. Uh, so, Mitch, let's say PFL or Bellator offered you another fight. Would you do it? Uh, depends what weight. Yeah, probably. I mean, you're. I mean, you've done a year of college wrestling, well, like so I, that's got to be help. That must have helped. Yeah, and like I do a lot more jujitsu now, but like I think my striking's probably gotten noticeably worse. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I probably would. You know, like to be honest, I that that one fight is always a potential. It just has to make sense. Like for me to take time away from my my family, from school and work, and. Uh, you know, I just, in all honesty, the UFC, like, when WME came in, it kind of just ruined the fucking sport for me, and, you know, and I'm terrible, so those two things combined. Number one, you're not terrible, dude. I don't understand why your, your record in the UFC was, what, three and three? Uh, it was two and four. Two and four, okay. Because, I, like, I, the fight I lost to that Anton Kubanen was more shit, as a more shit split decision. So it should have been three and three. Yeah. So uh, the okay. fact that you won three fights in the UFC at the highest level is something that 99.999% of people will never be able to do. Well, like at one point I was ranked at least in the top 30 in the world at 155. So I feel okay about that. I beat a guy who just fought for the title. Um, I did good things. You know, I'm, I'm, I got probably one of the best submissions of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. I and lost, then, and then you, fought, you fought Bellator too, right? Who did? Did you fight in Bellator? No. Where, where did you fight before the UFC? Uh, I fought in, like, we had a, uh, it was World Series of Fighting. Yeah. So it was like, it was like, the World Series of Fighting was here. It got bought by the World Series, so that's what it became. Or pure PFL, I guess, what they are now. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think's the best in your weight class at 55 right now? Khabib. I think Khabib's the best. I don't think anyone can... You don't think Conor can beat him? No. Uh, ooh, actually... You know what? I'm gonna disagree. I think that that's probably the closest guy. Disagree because yourself? It, it's, it's a, we it's saw a one-man show, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we saw the humble. Video. Fighters are different. 
Um, it's different. It's a 50-50 because of the counter-punching <laughs> ability of Connor. The thing right. is, is it, Dennis Seaver was able to take him down with a football tackle. Uh, a Jeremy Piven style tackle, right? <laughs> right. There you go. I love uh, it. Yeah. Chad Mendez was doing really well. He broke his thumb real bad, you know. So that it, it makes it an interesting fight in that sense. So I think Connor has two rounds to knock him out, and then Khabib, if he doesn't knock around two rounds, Khabib wins the fight. Yeah. But if you're Khabib, don't you know that his ready his jiu-jitsu is so superior that all he has to do is... Uh, yeah, but he's got to get it, he's got to get close. I mean, the dude has right. like... It's, a a close, it's the closing the distance that's going to be right. the issue. And he Khabib. hits so hard. I mean, you look he at does. like Poirier just goes out. He knocked out Nate Diaz, like knocked, knocked him down four times. Yeah. Uh, he just has such a hard right hand, which is why yeah. people were giving him... A, people were betting on him over Mayweather. But... Right. Exactly. You know, I you, think the, the other thing too is the style of wrestling that Khabib uses is that European and Russian style. That uh, yeah. yeah, that strange wrestling. So it's not based on the blast double like American style, right? Where they just they blast that double, get in, mash you down. He, he chain wrestles in and stuff. So that's the difference. Is a lot of Americans are really good because they break that distance with the with the blast double with getting in that way, right? Luke Rockhold told me that he's rolled with Khabib and, and Khabib feels he has the strength of someone that's at 185. Wow. That's what he said. He said he just has insane strength. I pummeled with him when I was at AKA for a couple weeks. Yeah. It, uh, he felt so heavy and just like arm pummeling, it felt so fucking insane at how strong he was for a guy that technically I was bigger than. Now you were oh. at the, uh, the Connor Mayweather fight. Yeah. What was it like actually during the event being there? It was weird because the you know we know audiences, and this audience was just like there were so many big shots in the audience. It wasn't like a really lively vocal crowd. It was oddly silent. You know what I mean? Um, and you know while Floyd was trying to figure him out, the first four rounds you're like, man, Connor could pull this off, you know? And then you know Floyd waited for his moment. You know, because, you know, if you don't really have a, a reference for, for boxing solely, you know, and you're in that whatever round it was, ninth or 11th was round. Sparring lots of rounds. It wasn't like he, he, like... You're right, but he, you know what Connor said to me afterwards? He said it felt like, he felt like more of like a football match. Ultimately, it didn't feel like, because he says when he's in the octagon... Like soccer you have to, football or football if, football? Soccer football. European football. Um, because he said, you know, when they stopped it, he thought it... Why are you stopping it? You know, because his reference for fighting is, you know, you have to tap out or have your face, like, yeah. ripped off. So he didn't know they were going to stop it. I still think he didn't get credit for that knockdown in the 10th or 11th when he hit him. Like, they said it was low, but it wasn't low. It was weird. Hey, so we got to go to ref by the restaurants? Uh, the restaurants? Yeah, because we got to... Oh, uh, by Bourbon Street? Yeah, by Bourbon Street. Uh, let me see. So, if you guys are listening or, uh, later, I'm going to put this in. I'm in a car with Mitch Clark and Jeremy Piven, two people that I never thought I'd be in a car with uh, in my life. you right before. Uh, I know. Well, you, uh, yeah, well, yeah, okay. I know, but just together, together. It's just a, a very a, a strange. Mitch is the, the most humble fighter in the UFC, and Piven is uh, the least humble fighter in the <laughs> UFC. <laughs> uh, That's a, like, that was a softball you threw me. <laughs> <laughs> Pivot is, is a hardcore MMA fan. Yes. Has been to lots of MMA fights. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, is going to be hosting the MMA Awards this year uh, in Vegas, July 4th weekend, fight weekend. And then I'm going to try to get us tickets to go see Stipe versus Cormier, uh, which is also that weekend. And also, that is uh, okay. on that fight, Brad Tavares is taking on, what's his name? That ben. guy from New Zealand. A black guy from, I think he's from New Zealand. They were calling him the next Roy Jones, but his last fight he looked terrible. Israel? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I mean John Jones. But yeah, Israel. What's his nickname? Something funny though. The uh, nightmare? No. The... No, it's it's. I forgot what it is, but uh, yeah, Israel. I'm not I'm not sold on him though. You? Nope. No. You know, a lot of these these flashy kickboxers. Until they learn wrestling, it's wrestling's hard. Yeah. Like everybody wants to be champion, but no one wants to go to wrestling practice. That, that's that's what the, the metaphor for life. Um, I'm trying to think the best way to get to the fucking Bourbon Street might be to just cut through the mall. 
If you know, Jeremy, if you want a funny follow, follow Mitch Clark on Twitter because he's just bitching about being in college again. In my life. He's 32 in college <laughs> with a bunch of people. But the good news is you got a baby face, so no one's going to look at you and go, hey, fucking old man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, except in the wrestling room, they all call me fucking shit, shit like that. What do they call you? The old man fucking, even though the coach is like 14, 15 years older than me. They call you like blue from old school and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Speaking of I'm old school, Jeremy was in old school. That was, you were the dean. That was yeah. one of my favorite oh, movies yeah, all the time. Fucking, yeah, I was a dean. How, how, much, how much fun was that, working with Vince and all those guys? It was incredible. <clears throat> Did I ever tell you about the... Oh, we're recording, okay. Um, <laughs> it just, it, no, I mean, you know, it's, just, it's good to check in. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, Todd Phillips is a genius. Yeah. The, the movie holds up, stands the test of time, for sure. Uh, yeah, everyone was amazing. Will and Farrell, is he, I mean, Will is Farrell, he always in character? Um, he's not always in character. He's a very sweet low-key humble dude and then when it's time to go he just crushes it yeah. and there's a moment there where I'm basically putting them through their paces to see if they can get into a fraternity and at one point Will is doing an interpretive dance but he's using some sort of a ribbon and chasing an imaginary kitten and on camera all I'm doing is pretending to write while tears are squirting out of my face <laughs> because it's literally the funniest thing I've ever seen he's wearing a leotard he's totally committing you know what I mean and amazing. yeah it's amazing. Luke's brother, Luke Wilson's brother. Yeah. Owen Wilson. I'm oh, sorry. Owen Wilson's <laughs> brother, Luke. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm such a dummy. Reverse that. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with me. Go on. I have verbal dyslexia. Uh, he's actually uh, dyslexic in real life. Oh, okay. Nice. And you're overachieving then. <laughs> no, I, I look totally... You're, you're, no, you're crushing the game, man. You're amazing. He no, goes, I, I have a scholarship to college. I go, for what? He goes, ADHD. I'm like, come on, man. No, it's a scholarship anniversary for that. <laughs> All right, go on. I don't remember a time when we weren't looking for a parking space. <laughs> Literally, it's been, we've been looking for a parking space for 14 yeah, why years. Don't just, why don't you just drop them off by the, yeah, yeah, by the entrance? Bro, no one's going to steal this car. You could leave it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no one. <laughs> oh. Nobody's stealing this car. Yeah. By the way, so we're in Mitch Clark's car, which is awesome. Fuck because you. it's a vintage car. It has the windows that roll down. Like, if you're going to do a drive-by in this thing, yeah. you have to literally roll down the, the, the windows. It's kind of a metallic <laughs> blue geo prism. It's, a, it's something you might you would just never even know it's there. <laughs> you know, I, you could trade it for a disposable razor. I'll give you this car for a razor. <laughs> Deal. I'm really happy. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, drive me around. <laughs> Uh, are we near Bourbon Street? Is this how to get there? I think so. If we come in through here, and you'd see that you're right by Winners. So. All right. Because otherwise, I might have to drive all the way. Fuck! Around. I have to. I have to walk him to the to the thing because he's gonna get lost. Thank you, brother. Uh, Thank you. We'll see you soon. Right? All right. That was Mitch Clark and Jeremy Piven and me in a car talking. Uh, that's my podcast. Also, people, if you're on Amazon, if you go to Amazon.com and you order, go to my website first, AdamHunter.com. Then click the Amazon banner and then shop. It'll take you two seconds. I make money. The podcast makes money uh, and doesn't cost you any money. And it helps me. Uh, so that's my podcast today. Uh, people, I will be at, uh, where am I going to be? I'm going to be at the Wine Cellar in Apple Valley next Wednesday night. Uh, and then next Thursday, I'm at the Improv in Hollywood. Uh, next Friday, I'm at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. That's Friday, fr- it's Friday, Friday, June 8th. June 9th, I'm at the Long Beach Laugh Factory, June 9th. Uh, and then I am uh, Wednesday, the 13th, I'm in Long Beach, California at the Laugh Factory. I'm at the Tilted Kilt with Tom Galicchio and Sam Alvey doing stand up. And that's in uh, Temecula on Friday, the 15th. On the 16th, I'm at the M Resort Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, the 17th, I'm at the Rec Room in Huntington Beach, California. Next, uh, June 27th to the 29th, I'm in, uh, to the, actually to the 31st, I'm in Edmonton, California at the Comic Strip. And July 1st to the 8th, I am in Las Vegas uh, at the Stratosphere. Hit me up for comps. I will get you guys comps. Uh, thank you to everyone on the podcast for coming on. Thank you guys. Uh, take care. Bye bye. Trap sons and trap sons and trap sons. Trap sons and trap don't sons. Trap don't sons. Trap don't sons. Tuni sons to hook them door pull down. Tada stolt and door pull the moral tie.